time. So it, we was doing crazy. I was thinking of all kinds of crazy stuff. Man, that's so from dope, Iraq. Man. Like, we ready to go? Cool. All right, I'm gonna get us rocking. Man, Jermaine, I don't know uh, exactly what your friends call you or what you want me to call you, but uh, I'm always like, Main Jermaine. Main Jermaine. Yeah, yeah. J Work. That's normally what people call me, J Work. So. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because that, it's funny that you say that because uh, back when we first kind of met, stuff. That's what I seen. Uh, like as far as that's what your Instagram name is. And then when yeah. I would talk to somebody about you, whether it be like Jonte and them or uh, whoever, yeah. that's like they would say, "Oh, like who are you talking about?" Whatever something. And then I would kind of hesitate to say it because I'm like. I don't want to just call somebody their, their, their Instagram, <laughs> their, their Instagram name, the IG tag. Yeah. But, King J Work. But anyways, yeah. man, let's get into it. How, and also, before we go on to uh, what's, how was Christmas for you, man? How uh, it, it, was, it was amazing. Family time, just downtime. The most valuable asset is time. So just spending time with family is always very important. That's big to my wife and her culture and their family. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, man. I, I've uh, been lucky enough to be kind of close with uh, – people from like a couple different cultures like yeah. i mean something like you're getting at like uh, my guy luis here yeah. and then uh my friend miguel and a couple other people and it's like it's weird how in uh almost it seems like almost every culture, culture. outside of americans is that it's like the real family oriented and yeah. we're like the opposite man like we can't stand our family a lot of times mm -hmm. or we just go at it or like we just don't it, the main we thing is we, away. yeah and the main thing is we don't appreciate it you know what yeah. i mean enough to even like to until be better passes, to each other. Until someone passes or something yeah. bad happens. Yeah. Just, I'm learning my lesson with that. Like, my family's all broken up. Everybody's everywhere. But, you know, with my wife, it's like, okay, Thanksgiving, we're having family over, if you want to or not. Christmas, we're having family over. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, like a loner to a sense of, like, stuff that happened with the military. It makes me that way. But it also is the driving force behind everything else that I do, the reason I am the way I am. So she brings that value into the household. Like, family is really important. No matter what you say, we got to spend time with the family. Now, the family that <clears throat> don't want to be here, they don't have to be. Right. But we're still going to extend our hand for the invite. So Christmas was amazing. Thanksgiving was amazing. Shout out to my wife and just the culture that she brings into our household. It's so dope, man. It's so dope uh, to get the balance yeah, you that your wife gives you. You know what I mean? And that's what I tell a lot of people when we talked a little bit about it on this podcast is like, especially when you find someone that can bring those things to you or force you to kind of do some of the yeah. things that you might be hesitant to do. And like you said, since you kind of stay in your shell and stuff yeah. at times that she's yeah. giving you that other, almost forcing you, but in a way, forcing it in a way that is good for you. Positive energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's enforcing that. Definitely. But at the same time, let's get rolling on things. Cause like, I think even a lot of things we just mentioned now are people we mentioned that no one knows, but uh, <laughs> so, so, Let's start from the beginning and go into like a like a little bit of your origin story and tell people like uh, who you are, where you where you grew up, your siblings. It's kind of like a, gotcha. a a brief idea of uh, what your beginnings were like. Okay, so um, we're from Philadelphia. My parents were from North Side of Philadelphia. Uh, we moved to Columbus, Ohio. Um, I went to Brookhaven High School. Uh, my sister Portia Jenkins, the video vixen, went to Brookhaven High School. Uh, basically, we grew up middle class family, and our parents always pushed us uh, <coughs> to go for whatever we wanted in life. I mean, we had everything in a small knit group, which is my family, my dad, my mom, my sister, and me, and a dog. You know, and he, my dad used to tell me all the time, "If you want something, go get it." I remember a, a story. I was like telling my dad, "I was like, yo, these these D boys. Well, it probably wasn't drug dealers back then." We probably used to call something else. I was like, yo, they got the cars, they got the money. I want that. And my dad was like, you ain't going to do that if you live here with me. Right. You got to work. Like, man, I gave you everything so you can go out and dream and you can make way more money than what they ever bring in. So that's stuck Without with looking me. over your shoulder, too. Yeah, without looking over my shoulder. So my, my main thing is my guys that, you know, my brothers that I grew up with, we never stood on any corners. I never sold drugs. You know, ditto, man, ditto. I, you know, so like for me, it was always about like, how do I get ahead? How do I get them Jordans? That was the first little hustle. Like, how do I stay in Jordans every week knowing my parents couldn't afford it? So I would get a job when no one else was working. You know what I mean? So I came from a, my, my family background is hard nosed. My dad was no joke growing up. Like he was kick your, kick your ass if you did something wrong. Uh, if my mom was yelling about how we was getting on her nerves, she would kick your ass, then he would kick your ass. So it's like, I grew up with that, and I resented my dad a lot growing up 
but then I have friends that didn't have their dads in their life. And I see now where I'm at and where they're at. Like, yeah, I used to get clowned a lot. My dad would pull up on me, what they, which they call that now. Yeah. And be like, why are you out this late? Yeah. Snatch me up, smack me up. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed to go to school. But then it's like, I look back on that now. I'm like, all those fun times or them times I was pissed at him, he shaped me into who I am today. So he seen something in me, maybe at a, a younger age that I didn't see in myself or that he didn't have when he grew up. He didn't have a dad. So he pushed maybe a little too much at times. He pushed it for me to be, you know, better than what I am today. And I, I thank them every single year. Oh, yeah, man. I feel like the it. older you get, the appreciation that you have for if you, if you are somebody that's had parents around, man, and that really were on you about the right things and told you, like, hey, stay on top of this. We're not, yeah. we're not doing that. And even the stuff like you're talking about, I mean, you instantly made me think of a time like that where – uh, my dad would do stuff like that too. It was always, I always tell people something that kind of shaped me to be the way that I am. It's like, I was always the person that if everybody was doing something they wasn't supposed to, if I did it too, I got caught. Always. Like it was always me. And, but at, a big part of that was my parents. It was because they weren't blind to the stuff, you know what I mean? Or they mm -hmm. weren't so worried about their own stuff that they didn't pay attention to what yeah, I was doing yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And you talking about him pulling up or you just get <laughs> your ass whooped or something like that. Yeah. It, it makes me think of a time I stayed out way too late when I was really young and came home and man, and just got- Yeah, I got destroyed. Woo, that happened yeah. to me too. I got destroyed. Yeah, my man. dad was like, he was sitting on the front porch. I remember it. Oh, my dad had the door closed. I already knew it was bad for me. Yeah, man. I pulled up. He was like, <laughs> sitting on the front porch. He was like, just go where you came from. And I was like, well, I got to go to school tomorrow. He yeah. was like. You grown, go where you came from. I'm with a senior. I'm in 11th grade, I think. She a cheerleader, head cheerleader. I'm like, all right, so just go where I came. I go with my cousin, sleeping in his basement, no pillows, no ma no sheets on the mattress. I'm just down there, go to school the next day. Same clothes I wore out to the party. I'm like, what is this? I can't do this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we battled a lot, but it shaped me for who I am today. And I'm very thankful for yeah, my Yeah, it was parents. what we needed, man. It was what yeah. we needed. Uh, like with my story, man, I stayed out way too late. Me and this other dude trying to mess around with these girls, talk to these girls and come home late. And it was in the summertime. My oh, my dad always had the windows and doors open in the summertime. Yeah. He was that type of oh, dude, always wanted the fresh air coming through. And uh, until he went to sleep, the doors were open yeah. and he'd be in the living room. But uh, I come up and the doors closed and I'm just like, and I see the cars there. I know he's there. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, it, you know this, what time this is, is not looking good for me. Yeah. And, I, so I go up and I'm just like, oh man, I'm telling, and my dude having to come with me. And I, I, I almost kind of had him come with me thinking yeah, it was going to help the situation, yeah, yeah. but you know how that goes. That, yeah, does, yeah. that doesn't help, the, that that doesn't help the situation. Nothing. But uh, yeah, my dad opens up the door and he's like, hi, boo. You know what I mean? And it just yeah. goes down from there. And it was like, I mean, it's nothing like I got beat like somebody who was yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like under some crazy abuse type thing or nothing like that. But it was what I needed, man, to yeah, know like I agree. you're disrespecting me and you're too young for this and yeah. a lot of different things that everything. Shape. He, yeah, everything he was doing was right, man. I'm, and I'm like you, man. I'm super thankful and glad that they I'm, did. Cause yeah, I, me too. Especially you see it now. Like you said, I think you really hit it with saying like you see it in your other friends or the people around you as they get older that didn't have that. It's like it, it, it creates a lot of problems for them and, and later in life a lot of times. Yeah, you'd be looking like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference. For sure. But then also, uh, t let's tell people a little bit how we met. And, and I don't know if you remember, but how I think the first time I think I saw you is when uh, I did the thing with uh, John Tay and Rocky for uh, the Macy's model showcase. Yes, yes, yes. Male yes. model showcase. So that was uh, John Tay and Rocky had put on. Uh, they done brokered a deal somehow with Macy's to have models walking in the uh, clothes that Macy actually provided. So I went up there just to kind of look around, see what was going on, see what Jonte and Rocky was talking about because they always got something working. Uh, and basically walked in and seen a couple people that I either knew, worked with in the past. I seen you. I'm like, dang, man, like Macy's. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, Macy's is actually letting y'all rock the clothes and walk around the store and model. It, it, it blew me away that just breaking down those walls and seeing that lets you know that if you know the right people, talk to the right people, that you can actually go after anything you want. It's not about, oh, a, it's sure. not about a degree. It's just about having that confidence to say, you know, I'm going for this. It might sound crazy. Y'all might look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm going for this. And when I seen that they did that, it put them on a better, uh, a, a bigger peg for me like okay 
so y'all are serious about this fashion thing. yeah yeah when they hit me up i took it the same way man yeah. because uh i i, I want to say maybe they asked somebody because they had seen me do a little bit of other small stuff because i was only doing smaller stuff at the time i was like just getting into it yeah. just getting into modeling stuff and uh I think I want to say Jonte hit me up and he's like, yes, yeah, this thing for Macy's or maybe it might have been my dude Dane that got me in first. Gotcha. Uh, Dan, you know, Dame yeah, Shep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it might have been him saying, hey, is it cool if I have this dude contact you, whatever? And it happened yeah. to be Jonte and stuff. And then when they said it was like for Macy's and stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, super do, legit. Yeah, yeah like, do it let's, right now. Yeah, let's, 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 let's do it. Let's right make it now. happen. Yeah. And then when I got there, I wasn't I wasn't sure because uh, I knew there was a couple other people there besides them that was kind of with them, like you and then the dude Brandon and yep, a couple other people. Yep. And I, I didn't know who all was doing like the Fresh Soul thing with them or yeah. who was involved. I didn't know if you were, if you had any part of that or you were just there with them nah, like, I was kind of actually, supporting and I was just and actually the there scene. just supporting because at the time I had my own brand, J Work Limited, and right. J Work was doing really, really well through, I think I was probably in my fourth season going into my fifth season. And just to explain that really quick, that's that's how uh, the MTV deal came. So basically, I was on MTV because of my experience with the military. Mm -hmm. I got hit with a bomb in Iraq, couldn't see for like two months. Long story short, MTV found out about it because Columbus Dispatch did an article. It said, I think the article read, blind veteran turns to design. So when I came home, I started, well, not even when I came home, like just a little bit, I started seeing differently after the bomb blast, like I started seeing designs, colors, things a little bit differently. Things are more appealing to the eye, like colors and visions, all types of crazy stuff was happening. For was me. it that just after like you healed or after a surgery or something? Or after nah, what? just right after it happened. It's like almost like my dad always said, like in the Bible, it said for once I was blind. Now I can see. He right. said I truly could see now what I needed to be doing. Oh, OK. So it was like. Dang, like I got this. Uh, I remember it was caught. Uh, it was a it was a, a Asian warrior. His name is Guan Gong, and I drew him. I didn't know who that was, but I drew something. And then my wife at the time, she was just my friend, and she said that looks like this. And then we ran with it, and we sold like seventy five shirts off rip. That was my first taste of business. Just taking a creative design that I created, getting it printed, and then she went out to the Asian community. My 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 brothers went out to their communities, and we sold out of every shirt. And I was like, "Dad, we have something here." Three four years later, here come MTV saying, "We want to do a show on MTV of you and your business, J Work Limited. We understand you're a veteran. We understand you got a purple heart. Let's roll with it." And I was like, "Yo, where y'all gonna stay at? We're coming to your house." That's and so then crazy. from there, it was just it took off. And I I met Jonte and them kind of during that time frame. I knew what they were kind of doing. I seen them out in Vegas a couple times for like a magic show because they go every year. So I was going, I actually was a vendor at the famous magic show in Vegas, paid like 5500 for our first booth. I'm talking about raise the money, raise the capital and pay the money for our booth. Went out there, had a phenomenal show, gave out a whole bunch of product to like all these different people from all over the world. Basically, international is what I wanted J-Work to always be. Because J-Work means justified well for real kings. Gotcha. Thought of that, you know, and everything from there just, it, just, it was out of control the way everything grew and, and blew up. And then I just stopped. And everybody's like, well, why'd you stop J-Work? My grandma passed away from cancer. It threw me for a loop, like, just to see her, you know, basically deteriorate over amount of time. And my most, my best season financially was season five is when... MTV hit. It's like if you think about how so much social media is now, it's the way you plan things out. It was all planned out, and then she got sick. Our family's not that close. Like we just talked about family not being close, and then my dad not really going to go see her. I had to step up to the plate to kind of take his place. That had an effect on me. I didn't really want to design anymore. I really didn't want to do anything anymore. So then after she passed, you know, we planned sneaker freaks. When Jonte and them come back around, I had a concept. I was like, do people still stand in line for sneakers? I didn't know for sure. Went to a couple lines, a couple different places. I went to Northern Lights. I went to um, off of High Street, to KC Men's that was by uh, campus. Mm -hmm. People was in line. I think it was in line for the Air Jordan 3s. I was like, people still stand in line. It was a whole bunch of white kids. 
And I was like, why don't we have a sneaker show here? Ding, 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 ding. I was like, yo, we should do a sneaker show here. So I'm, I'm battling with the idea. How do I do it? Am I just tripping because I lost my grandma? I didn't know what I was going to do with J work. So what I did was DJ Bug, he hit me. It's like, that's why I said God works in mysterious ways. He's like, he hit me like we should do a sneaker show. I was like, I know some guys that fresh show that kind of do their thing with the sneaker thing. I don't know what they do exactly, but they do fashion shows. They let's let's partner and get something together. They we called them up. I think it was all via Twitter too. And I don't really even do Twitter. It just it happened the way God wanted it to happen, right? So then I'm like, what are we gonna call it? What are we gonna call it? I remember Googling hmm. and seeing a girl licking a bottle of a shoe. I was like, sneaker freaks. And the name stuck. We drew up the first logo. My dude Willie drew up like this um, logo, this background of Columbus with like the words and like sneaker, uh, tennis shoe, string. Oh, okay. And sneaker Freaks was born right then and there. Lost my grandma. I always tell people I lost my grandma 60 days before we launched Sneaker Freaks. It takes us six months to plan it now, but that was how I was supposed to do it. So the stress level was on 1,000. I remember the first show, I cried. Tears in the back. Scott Wooten that owns um, Avalon. All my dudes that own stuff was there like, what are you tripping for? I just lost my grandma 60 days ago. And its show was wrapped around the building because every show I go to church. It's always on Sunday. I always help set up. I bang out. They call me choir boy. I go to church, get my prayers on, say, yo, I hope we have a good, successful show. No one gets hurt. No one gets robbed. I pray for that. I'm driving downtown to the Sheraton Presidential Suite. There's parents running with boxes of shoes. I was like, there's no way they're running on sneaker freaks. There's no way possible. I get there. The line is down the escalator. The line is wrapped around the building. I remember Rocky and Chante said, we held the line until you got here for church. It was so stacked. And I'm like, tag, it worked. <laughs> In 60 days, it worked. And from there, we never, we never really looked back. I mean, sneaker freaks is a brand name. People love it. People beg us on the Instagram Bring it back, bring it back. When it, why only twice a year? I'm like, it's hard enough right, right. when we was doing it once a year. You know what I mean? So that's a little bit, a little bit of, you know, just the grind, the determination to always do something. I don't think I could ever just be a nine to five worker. I, I don't think that's in my soul. I think my grandma had it with the design. That's kind of why I stopped after she passed away. That was kind of her passion passed through me. And I was making it, making it, making like, Grandma, look at me, look at me. Even though our family's not tight, look at me, look at what I'm doing. She passed away. I lost that. I didn't need to prove anything anymore. MTV, I was on MTV and BET. So in my family, that's like, you made it. Like, right, you, right. you already made it to the next level. And after she passed, I was like, I, I don't really want to do this. I don't want to be J-Work no more. Even though it stuck with me because it has a bigger meaning. Justify what for real kings has nothing to do with designing clothes. It's a mindset. Justified wealth of real kings. If you're a king, you understand how to produce money. CEO, creating every opportunity. What 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 do you want? What is your why? You know what I mean? So family is my why. My sons is my why. My daughter's my why. It's like my wife is my why. Like I want them to be free, you know, forever. Oh yeah. I'm it makes so much sense, man. <laughs> and like I love how you talked about uh like sitting in the back and crying and stuff just because when something like that happens, like something so good like that after something so hard and so bad, it's like it hits you even harder. It just really makes you appreciate it 10 times harder, yeah, it seems. And it's it like does. it you get overwhelmed with, I'm sure you had not just the emotion of like thinking about your grandma and stuff, but also that emotion of like, man, look at, like you said, like you we were always it. trying to show your grandma and it's not, and then for it to happen, like, right after and stuff it was like it was something to help kind of bring you out of it you know it what i mean insane. it was yeah. insane yeah yeah man it had to have been it yeah. had to have been that was a feeling i i will never forget how i felt that day ever so oh yeah I, for something like i said for something that good to happen after something so bad is like it has to be a major impact on you and and like i said i really think maybe that's what you're saying maybe not but like it kind of helped bring you through that time, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? It did. And not everybody gets that, so yeah. I'm sure you were super thankful yeah. for that, too. Yeah, man. But uh, since you brought it up, too, I kind of want to get back into that with um, what happened over the military and stuff. Like, So how long after school and 
even let's even slow back a little bit from that. Uh, you went to Brookhaven. What year did you graduate? Ninety nine. Okay, okay. So you were there a little bit before, but I mean, kind of. How what, what, how good were they in basketball at that time? Or uh, we were amazing. Like, yeah. Drew Lav came after, after us. Yeah, yeah. Like Antoine was there. I was there in ninth grade. Twan is my dude. Like yeah. Twan was there killing everybody in the city. And everybody oh yeah, like West about and that. Brookhaven. Like yeah. I went to West and I was going to the games because my brother was there. I wasn't. Th- I was still in the middle school. Yeah. But I was going to the games and yeah, that's. And then after Twan left, the rings came down to the younger generation, which is Blue Towns. One, my one of my best friends, my brother Frank Cartwell, uh, Phil. It, it, it's just a lot of people. That that that's why it's sad that Brookhaven's closed down now. Because they had a dynasty. It, you gotta, you, even in football, it was amazing during that time. Going to school. High school at Brookhaven was like uh, a fashion show. Um, <laughs> it was like being in college. It was like you were almost like you were like the man just for going there. And I, I grew up with all the dudes I'm naming. Always tried to hoot with everybody that I was naming, right? But I was also always addicted to getting money, which you know sometimes goes left. Yeah. When you're trying to get money at a young age, you want to keep up with the trends, you want to be fresh, even though your parents can't afford to be fresh. I was doing everything, man, to make sure I stay fresh and make sure I didn't do nothing to get myself in too much trouble. But Brookhaven basically housed some of the the coldest people in the city that are doing some of the best. Like I, I look at what everyone's doing now. A lot of people from Brookhaven are doing really, really well. Career wise. People went to college, got their degrees. I would imagine the level of competition, man. Oh. I would imagine that's what built it. Like you said, if 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 it really was like that with you, I mean, football being that nice, basketball being that nice, people being into fashion and trying to stunt on each other and everything. Yeah. I mean, that that creates that fire in people yeah. because you gotta keep. We still you, have you gotta it. compete. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. still has it. Every yeah. time you talk well, to you someone, you know that's such an impactful time of your life, yeah. man. Where that's where you pick, you start to pick up a lot of who you are. As you transition into yeah, being yep. an adult, you know what the I mean. Kids don't have that these days. Yeah. It's totally different for the kids now. Like, you had to compete in those days. There was no Instagram to save you. There was no Twitter fingers. There was no. Yeah, nothing. you couldn't just post highlights on there yeah, and stuff like could, that, yeah. making it look like you were yeah, better than you were. You had to really and the whole, do uh, something. Fifth place trophy thing yeah, that people talk yeah, about nowadays. Like, yeah, none of that back then. Brookhaven, you had to bring it in every aspect, no matter if it was fashion, no matter if it was having money, to having the women, to having your basketball stats up, to having the football stats up, the track, you had to bring it. And that's why I learned, that's why I homed a lot of things that I I learned in business and everything is just going to Brookhaven. It's like going to college almost. That's what it felt like. That's so dope, man. Uh, the thing that I've kind of noticed, and I and I want to have more conversations with other people about it. It's weird, like uh, me being from the West Side. The West Side, I I I didn't see as much like a uh, push for entrepreneurship and stuff on this side of town. For some reason, it was like the people that did were the cats that were hustling. Yeah. Outside of the people that were selling drugs, it was like there you'd have some people kind of interested in that lane, but it was weird, like. Out east, out north, it seems like it's it's big, man. And I wonder what created it out there or made it like seem like it's it's deeper out there or it's bigger. Well, what I think it is, is it's when like like I told you, like when I told my dad, I said, I see these guys, they making money, they getting uh money, they got the women, they got the cars, you like, well, push towards this. My dad always pushed me towards having a job to make sure I can earn money. But he never said he said I could do whatever I wanted to do, but when I tried to, you know, when I tried to tell him, "Hey, I'm about to do this J work thing," he was looking at me like I was crazy because it's how our minds are tapped. It's like, oh, you should work, you should maybe go to college and get that job. Absolutely. So I think a lot of OGs that were selling drugs might have told the kid that you might not, this might not be for you. Maybe you should start a business. Maybe you should go that route with it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to look over your back every day. We had people like that out there that might have been drug dealers, but they would push you towards something else. Like, yeah, we had some of them too, honestly, but it just, it's weird to me that definitely seems, and I'd be super interested if anybody had any kind of stats on this stuff about like uh, businesses originating from different areas mm. of town, but it, it definitely seems a lot different. And like uh, it, that a lot of people out that way just were more, in that mindset, at least, gotcha. but yeah. I, I mean, it's something that 
who knows what the what <laughs> right. the what the, the cost would probably it, crazy. It, it, well yeah and it might just be something it could be something as small as just like somebody really well known yeah. from like um the middle part of that area or something yeah. like that kind of yeah. did something yeah. and it kind of started putting sparks in people because similar like how I was talking to you before the podcast and stuff is like Sometimes that's all, what it takes for people is to see yeah. somebody close to them or somebody that they see a little bit of reflection of this, themselves in to really give them that boost to be like, okay, then I can do it too, or yeah, I should start like thinking. Yeah, I should start I should thinking that like way. That. Also, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, so then after school, how much longer after did you end up going into the military? Uh, I think it was uh, what, what year you graduated? Like eight, you're eighteen, nineteen, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. I, I my best friend, um, he went. He's supposed to play for the Reds, or he tried out for the Reds, and then it didn't work out. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go to school for free. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm going to join the military. And like, my friend, I love you to death. He's going to probably watch this and be mad at me, but he couldn't even do push-ups at the time, right? So in basketball practice, you got to do push-ups. Try it. You got to do push-ups. They would clown my boy. He's like 6'9". They would clown him because he couldn't do the push-ups. I'm like... You about to go to the military? Like, what are you tripping? That's all they do is push yeah, us. But he, break you. he worked himself into it. And when he came back, I'll never forget how he came back. He came back almost a mom and dad's boy mm-hmm. to coming back a man. He came home, bought a brand new Caprice. And I'm all about money. I'm like, dad, you got a brand new Caprice. Paid off. Rams paid off. I go get him from the airport. Like, let's go get my car. Money. Just a newfound confidence in who he was. Because we weren't the I was popular by the twelfth grade. And um so by ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, we we had built our own reputation. So for him coming back home and actually having his stuff together, it inspired me. I was like, dang, so now he got free schooling. Now if he go to school and get a certain, I think it's a two point seven, you get paid to go to school. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I want that money. Screw everything else. I want that money too. I want to come home and buy me a brand new car. I'm driving a, a beater. Mm-hmm. So he was like, yo, you you can do this easily. So I talked one of my other best friends into going, it's like, yo, let's go do this. Had my first son. So it stopped me from going right then and there. So I think I went in, my son was born in 2001. I think I left in 2002. So for the time I graduated in 99, I basically worked jobs. It wasn't really business minded. It was just Get a job, get a job. Oh, you know, at that age, you're getting let go every year. Oh, okay, we don't need you no more seasonal. Oh, you were doing this, go here, go here. So I really didn't understand the job market per se. I'm like, my dad got the same job for 20 years. Why am I getting let go? It's like, I come to work on time, do my job. But I realized that the job placements in Columbus, Ohio was like, if you get a good job, you should probably stick with it. If you get like a job that's, they'll just let you go quick as that. That scared me. My son's being born. I have a job. The job is gone. I don't know why. I was like, I'm about to go to the military. So something that's stable. Something that's stable. Something that's going to make sure that if anything happens to me, he's good for life. I've always been about making sure my kids, no matter the relationship with their mother, is well taken care of. And me and his mom, my first son, Lance, has a, his mom basically gave the rings to me to take care of my son when I got home. But we don't have no bad relationship. It's just that she lets me be dad. And I can never, you know, I honor that. Like, let me handle what I need to handle for my son. He needs his mom time. That's up to y'all to how y'all want to handle it. But I went to the military for him. So I had to make that decision because I remember getting a letter for Hiram College for Basketball Division II in, in Cleveland. And I told my dad, like, yo, I got this letter. I go play basketball. He's like, got son on the way. I ain't taking care of your son. Mm. Like, like, you got to step up. Like, and I'm like, but dad, you know, I got this letter. I want to go to play basketball. You don't got the money. How you going to do that and take care of your son? So put in perspective, I, like I said, we had a, growing up, I was mad at my dad a lot because he kept it real. And that's, when you realize that, it's like, dad, I got a son on the way. I can't pursue my dream. I don't know what the dream might have been. Might have never even played any minutes, but right. the dream was there. And it was like, you got to sacrifice as a parent. That's what my dad taught me at a young age. You have to sacrifice. Then we go to the military. It's like, cool, military. Boom, come home. I got the money. I got school. You being shipped to Iraq. 
it's like, hold on, I didn't plan for that. I didn't, I didn't want that. I was like, hold on, like, I thought I was supposed to be a weekend warrior, go one weekend a month, two weeks out the year. Now you telling me I've been home six months, I gotta go to Iraq. So That's then so you know, crazy. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it, it was insane. But to, to put perspective on that, we signed up after nine eleven. Like me and my friend, we saw what happened on the news. We saw the planes hitting it, and we still signed up because we felt like we had to do something. So I knew, I just said, no, it was going to be that quick. I thought I was going to be boots on ground for maybe two years. It was like, you know, six, eight months. Let's go. Had to go to training, had to go that. Next thing you know, I'm in Iraq. What was life like over there, man? Like I've, I've, I have, I've known people or had family in the military, but I, I, and I've talked to people a little bit that's been over there, but I mean, what was, what was, uh. It, it, day in the life, man. What was, what did it feel like to you? What what kind of stuff was it? It it, it was. T- I mean, to put it in perspective, man, it's it's a lot that goes into the military. For for instance, when you're in the military, a lot of times you're dealing with a lot of people that's been in their rank for years and years on end. There's a lot of racism in the military, which you would not think. You're going over there to fight a war, and it's like you might have to be fighting against the people in your unit. Because they don't like your skin color. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like the way the women are gravitating towards you. You deal with all that. Then you got to put your, your helmet on, grab your weapon, and go fight beside a person that you might feel might turn their gun on you. So, like, I went through so many different emotions over there. Like, being over there made me the loner that I kind of am today. Because you got to be able to, like, I, I took my son's pictures down. I was like, I have one life to live. And my dad told me on the phone, I mean, the first time I shot my gun over there, I remember he told me on the phone, he said, I don't care what happens, you got to make it home to your son. So I took down pictures. I remember doing this. It made me become someone else. I was like, pictures down. I can't even look at you right now. You're home. You're safe. I got to make sure I make it back home to you. So that's the mindset. Like, you had downtime, and we would just hoop and watch movies all day long. But that might have been once a week, the other six Days out the week, you were on the road getting shot at. You were out the road trying to help people. You were out the road on the road trying to not get hit by ID. That's what hit my convoy. That's yeah. What, what happened? What happened exactly with that situation? I mean, just to get uh, brief or so my birth. You like to explain? My birthday is November seventeenth. The truck, my truck was hit on November twenty first. So days after, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and at nighttime, you know, we would see people planting bombs. You're not allowed to shoot at them. You could see them planting bombs. That's you're crazy. not allowed to shoot at them. So, like, just being a kid, you're like, they're planting bombs to blow someone up, one of us up, but you're not allowed to engage. You can get court martial. So, like, you know, we were Is going it just to, because you don't know, they don't know for sure that's what they're doing, or why don't, aren't you I don't know. There's really no, you know, there's no explanation for Right, that. and you don't ask a lot of questions. You yeah, take don't ask, okay. don't tell. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? So, like, you be like, dad, they doing this? There's nothing we can do about it. You know, you might pull that trigger, depending on who's with you, might say, that was wrong. You're going to jail. Right, you know what I mean? Right. So, you got to think about, I want to get home. That's the main mission. Get home to my family. So, when the bomb blast ain't happening... I stayed over there, and I didn't even have to do that. But I had boys in the unit. We kind of what was in a racist unit. I wasn't leaving my battle buddies. That's just who I am. That's who I built my character on. You know, even in high school, if something went down, and I started initiated it. I would take the fall before I put anybody. That's just what I stand for. That's what my dad taught me. So when that bomb blast happened, I was laid up, couldn't see for two months. I stayed. I didn't go home. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't cry them on. I didn't even want to tell my parents when it happened. They was on vacation. But my battle buddy, white guy, his name is Big Rob, Dell Roberts, he was like, you got to tell them. You have to. I called my mom. I remember the phone call. I was like, mom, um, I might be blind. I remember that call. I had moments in my life that I remember that changed my life forever. You know, called my son's mom, Lance's mom. I might be blind. She like, you like Superman. There ain't no way. She didn't even want to believe it. And I'm like, yo, I might be blind. I'm tasting bomb right now. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it, was a, it was an amazing journey. But being over there, if you're, like, in the Air Force, my dudes in the Air Force, they didn't do nothing. They was like, why are we over? We play, we play get video games all day long. We don't know what we're doing here. In the Army, and the Marines, I don't know how it is for the Navy. You're out there. You're out there on the road, and it's very dangerous. 
I signed up for it, so I took it. That's why I didn't leave and come home and sit in Germany for two months and heal up. Or I didn't leave even afterwards because I could have... I could have used the excuse to get home. Like, yo, I'm thrown off. Let me get home. Mm -hmm. I just was like, don't put me on the road because I'm not, I don't know if I'm capable of not pulling the trigger. I might see something. I might be thrown off. So they kept me off the road the whole rest of the time. And another thing, I didn't go home. Like when you first get there, it's kind of like this. After you're there for 45 days, they're like, you can use your two weeks to go home. I waited the long, I wanted to endure the pain of being away. I wanted to not go home for two weeks after being there two months and they'd be sick to my stomach, I got to do another eight, nine, 10 months. So I waited as long as possible. My boys was coming back. One of my boys, we seen a kid get killed. He never came back. He was like, he was, his wife was pregnant. We seen it. He was like, I can't, he never came back. He went home on leave. And just as that perspective, you go home on leave, you waiting on them to come back. He never comes back. Never seen or heard about him ever again. Don't know if he's alive. Don't, don't know what happened, you know, but then I have other friends go home. They spent a lot of money. They show you what life is like at home when you come home and you're kind of like the hero. And I was like, dang, can't wait to go home. But I suffered. I went through that pain of staying there every single day, doing my job, doing what I needed to do. I learned so much about finances from different cultures. I learned about how to raise kids from different cultures. I learned about how to be a man from different cultures. So when I came home after bomb blast everything, my welcoming was amazing because it's like this dude got hit by a bomb. This dude come home. He a different person. My dad's like, that's not my son. That's a different person now. So that that was the perspective. I came home with weights on my shoulders and I had something to prove when I came home. I didn't want to be an injured veteran at the VA office asking for benefits or asking for help. I was like, I need to do something where people look at me and say, look at what this dude is doing. I love hearing that, man, because that's, that's, I think that's exactly what people probably do. And like, I think uh, even like I told you when I hit you up to bring you on, I was like, I think people need to hear your story and see your walk. Yeah. Because I was like, the stuff that I've seen from you and I pay, I paid close attention because you're, you're legit like a, a, a good source of motivation for me. And I think for a lot of people, man, seriously, because like I see you on there five in the morning working out. I see you posting this thing about sneaker freaks or this thing about meeting with some people about some other businesses doing this and that, like the story with the military, mm. spending time with your kids, you know what I mean? <clears throat> All your different things that you go through and just make, it seems like you're constantly busy or trying to make the best of your time, but also balancing it, trying to get a nice work, ba work life balance yes, with the family. Yes. And it's like, I mean, I think people hearing this now, yeah. they can, they'll be able to be like, similar to what I said to you earlier about like, they can now see somebody that's been through a lot more than they've been through yeah. and is making all these different things happen yeah. and maybe tell themselves like, why can't I make the stuff yeah. happen that I want to do or that I've been thinking about? I, I, and I think it's just about having a system. Like, like you say, you see me working out at five in the morning. So I, I do that now because I realized it was like, um, my son Lance, I missed a lot in his life being in the military. And I was like, dad, Lance is, grown now. Lance is about to graduate high school. How much did I really miss? And I used to feel like a terrible dad because I went and served the country for him. And I was like, tag, I missed this. I missed him walking, missed him talking. I missed a lot. And then I made decisions to go certain places like Hurricane Katrina. I didn't have to go there, but I went to make sure that I helped people that needed help, one, two, so he can be like, my dad served and went and helped people as well. But I realize I miss so much. So I'm working out seven at night to like nine. I come home, the baby's asleep. I was like, what they do? And I, I'm hearing what they did. I'm like, I missed that. Nah, I got to take this back to the beginning. I'm going back to 5 a.m. workouts while they sleep. I'll work out. I'll suffer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll suffer yeah. during that time. It's not suffering because it's like, it's, it's, it's my passion to work out. And it releases so much stress. But I'm going to get up early in the morning. Right, right. But make that extra time. sacrifice. Yes. To spend time with them right, at right. night. Getting so I'm not missing early, nothing. Right. Yeah. They want to watch a movie. I'm there every single night. My wife, hey, you want to go do something? Go do it. But I need to be here to watch these kids grow. Right. So it's it's funny because that's the same reason I started doing uh, the, my workouts on my lunch break. Yeah. Is because I was the same type of thing. I was doing like you. I was working around like working out like kind of like a seven yeah. to nine range at night. And I was thinking like, especially with me working and stuff, I was like, man, I would... 
be gone this many hours, 10, a, day, hours a day and then come home and then either be gone during that time or she go with me but she just be in the daycare that's there or something and i'm just like man that's not the way to go yeah, like it's not to life. to to spend that much time away from her after already spending the day away from her things like that i was like yeah nah yeah. i want to be able to come home I agree. if my wife needs me to do some things or help out around the house or run some places or whatever the case is i have that time yep. on top of the fact that all the nights that we really don't have something going on, it's like I can spend that home. quality time yeah. with my daughter I agree. and be a dad because that's, of course, really big to me too. And I, I see it in you, man. I yeah. see that the family thing is big to yeah, you. It's, it's huge, man. It, it, without, without our family, we have nothing. And time is our biggest asset. So it's like I want more time than I want more money because we never know when our time is up. You can always get more money. You could lose money, get more money, lose it again. You can't get back time. I think about my grandma. I wish my dad and her would have got it together so we could have had more time. People are like, well, you're talking about time. Like, I believe in the four Fs, you know, faith, family, fitness. It used to be financial freedom. I took away financial because it's just about freedom. I think about when, you know, slaves got free. They never said, oh, can you give us money to be free? They said, we want our freedom. I'll produce my own money. I'll produce my own crops. I'll produce my own this, but I want freedom. You know what I mean? So I was like, dad, let me cut off financial because that's throwing people off. They don't get what I'm trying to say. I want freedom. What's free? Freedom to be able to do what I want to do. If I want to go to Japan, I can plan it and go with my family. If I want to go to Cambodia, I can go because I put in the work now. I'd rather struggle now. So when I'm 40, 41, 42, 43, I'm financially free. I can do whatever I want. Freedom is being able to have that time to say, hey, invite everybody over to have a good night. Not just go out to party. That's not free to me. You know what I mean? It's not, man. And it's like, you could party all day till you're blue in the face, but you go home, those bills are still due. So I'm like, what kind of freedom do I want? I want the freedom where when I'm off, I, I don't worry about anything. No bills, no nothing. I don't want to hear about it because it's already been paid for months in advance. If you plan right, no matter what income you have, you can get financially free if you just set a plan and set a goal. Oh, yeah. I know people that take plenty of vacations and, <laughs> and live super uh, good, basically. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, of course, they're not... I'm not talking rich. I'm not talking... Yeah. I mean, they just... They make okay money, but they manage it well. They manage their time well. And that's... it. You make me think of two different things. Yes, there's people that are some of the promoters or people that really know how to make good money mm -hmm. off the party and stuff like yeah. that. It's very few. It's yeah, very it's few. Very and few. it's hard to not get caught up in that lifestyle once I you start agree. doing that. Especially when like, you're married and stuff. You yeah. can't be doing yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You know but I mean? at the same time, I, I don't get it in a lot of people that do constantly party their money away and stuff like that because it... From my experience, most of the time, those are the people that never get to go on vacation, never get to do some of the dope stuff that yeah. a lot of us do yeah, or other people do. Yeah. yeah, because their 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 pockets are dry all the time, or or it's a mindset. Yeah, man, and it, it just it 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 hurts so many aspects of their life. Yeah. Of not using that time more wisely or not I, I agree. spending it doing something things things I that agree. are better for them better for the people around yeah. them. I agree, man, a hundred percent. I th I think when you're growing up, you have to go through that to realize, hey, I'd rather be in Barbados partying than you know be downtown every single weekend. I have no problem with going to go have some fun. Yeah, but exactly. it's, it's got to be you know. Everything has to be timed. It has to be Everything planned. in moderation, man. Yeah, it has to be planned because I'd rather go overseas somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be, you know, I'd rather be somewhere where I could say, Dad, the fruits of my labor, I'm really relaxing, I'm really chilling, you know, so that's the best part about having that free time. Yeah, that's one of the first things I told people when, like, I kind of started phasing out the party, getting out of the party phase of my life and stuff like that it was like, and it was really short for me. And I think part of that was, like my my brother was older than me. Yeah. I could use his ID early yeah, on. I kind of yeah. got in the clubs and ran things earlier on, but just like it, it didn't take long for me at all to be like, man, this is the same thing all the time. Yeah, man. Like when you're going, you're partying and going to the bars and stuff like that. You're doing the same thing over and Every over and over. It's like weekend. Yeah, like I, I it got real dry to me because it was just like. What am I? What am I gonna go do? Like, if you're single, yeah. Sometimes cool. it's like, yeah, yeah you, you know what I mean. You, you, you go, go out with that little bit of hope. I'm gonna meet somebody <laughs> yeah, new tonight. Yeah, on right, it's, right, it's gonna right. go this way tonight, whatever. But 
that gets old and if you're not single it's really like what am i yeah. doing out here i'm just gonna go sit around spend some money on yeah. drinks. and it's even worse now because I, all everybody does is be on their phone 24 7. that's funny because so I, totally I don't go out no more now. so i wouldn't even know but that yeah. makes a lot of sense it's crucial everybody's on sense. instagram everybody's <laughs> snapchat and so you're sitting there no one's dancing that's you try crazy. to speak to someone they'd be like how many followers you have it's like what yeah, man, that's crazy. Like, yeah, I, I told my son, I said, you're going to have a hard time dating in this generation. It's going to be different. I think I think they'll adjust to a lot of things better than us because they've grown up in it. Yeah. I mean, I like, so for you to say hard, like, it's possible, but it might be, it might go smoother for them just because so much of this stuff has always been a part of their life, yeah, man. Yeah, and I see true. that. I see a little bit of it, like, in my, in my younger sister. I see a little bit in, like, my nephew and things like that. It's like... Some of the stuff that we think is going to affect them so bad because of them growing up differently with stuff. Some of it is just like they just roll with it. They roll yeah, with the punches true. the same way true. we did with stuff that was totally foreign to our parents. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? And, and in a way, it's looking at things maybe at times too optimistic. But I, I really do <laughs> see. I have a lot of faith, man, in the yeah. in us as humans and yeah. especially in America. I mean, we have it good here, man. And yeah. I know, like I've said it before in the podcast and stuff too. I know that's easy for me to say as a yeah. white male. You know yeah. what I mean? That even though like. I don't I don't fall super hard into the stuff that people say, Oh, like it must be nice you're you're white male that grew up this way and blah blah. But at the same time it's like I I have friends and I have people that I'm in contact with and and people's story that I follow like you are like stuff is out here for people to get yeah. and, and yeah, ways to true. live. So that's true. I, that I think this is a great place to live and I think uh even with all the things we deal with nowadays, our kids, us I think we're going to adapt well to it, man. Yeah, I think there's and a lot going on. There's a lot. There's, there's a, lot. a lot, and it, and at times it seems, it seems negative. It seems like end of the world type stuff for people and things like that. But I really, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's as bad as as social media and media makes it sound. Oh yeah, they're gonna blow it up to try to make us kill each other. That's that's the goal. But when you got people from different races wanting to do the same thing, change bring us all together, then we, we're unstoppable. But you won't see that on social media. You're going right. to see the negative. That's right. why I have to sometimes be like, listen, I got to put the phone down sometimes. You have to log out because you'll be wrapped right up in something, arguing with one of your friends on Facebook that might be a different race. You're like, we cool, right? Why are we even arguing? Because we got different views or we see something differently. Now nah, let's let's put let's put down the, the, the Facebook Call me. Let's talk it. Let's talk it out. Oh, absolutely. Or in person, and that—that's the crazy thing. I've had a lot of conversations with people about that lately, and I even told my dad, like, man, I—I—I I, I don't want me and you to text very much, like, yeah, if at all, because I'd rather just talk to you or get you yeah. on Facetime or something like that, because it's—it's it's really hard to gauge people's vibe and the tone of what they're saying to you, and through, so people through, through social media, yeah, man, texting, and yeah. and and we've got so comfortable communicating Doing through it. that way yeah. that. So often we don't realize these arguments or these disputes or stuff are going that route and going south when they don't really yeah, have to. You know not what I mean? Not at all. Yeah. I, I think agree. you hit it right on the money. I think you hit it right on the money with saying like that, especially like arguing with a friend or arguing yeah, and, like, and thinking like somebody, with especially like a racial thing yeah, or, yeah, or like, religion differences yeah, or political, like, all that. Know, even like with your business, people, people, somebody will be like, well, you know, I don't have it as nice as you. It's like, well, what do you mean by that? Like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I work, we all got 24 hours, the same 24 hours in a day. I have five kids to take care of. You have one. I make sure I, I remind you have one. So, and my son Jordan has a trait. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, I can't do this. I can't get up at five. Every time someone has an excuse to me, I just listen to them. I say, yeah, my son Jordan has a trait. Yeah, I'm, I'm battling PTSD. Some nights I can't even sleep. I'm still up at five. Yeah, I got a daughter in college. Her tuition needs to be paid. Come on, man. Like, like, it's what do you really want in this life? My job is not to be arguing on social media, not to be posting no negative anything. That's why I don't really try to get involved in that. I want to show the positive. If you want to see my page, you're going to see my babies, my businesses, my travel from time to time. I might buy myself something nice. And even then... Even then, I kind of feel bad about it because I feel like some people look at things like, like I got a Tesla. Everybody knows that. Like, but it's like I still have a car payment. I still put myself in some type of debt for that. Like, if you really want to look, look at what it is. I got friends. I got close, close friends that are 
like 50 Cent buying all these cars, but I post my Tesla, they won't even go like it. My friends, my brothers. It's like, it's a mindset that social media makes people jealous. And it's not, it was never, the person that made Facebook, he, he made billions. He, he didn't make it for you to be jealous. He made it to start a business. Why don't we look at some of these things and say, let's start a podcast. Take a step back, yeah. Why don't we start a business from this? It's like, I look at what people do and I'm like, dang, like, I can't even rock with you because you never came to my house and you never came and see my son. So I'm starting to realize how people's motives really are and what they really feel. So I'm like, you know what, let me, let me fall back because I'm too passionate. So I'm passionate about not only me making it and my family, I want everybody around me to make it to whatever comfort level they want so they can, we got to travel together. Let's travel together. I've been off for a year and a half when I got home from my uh, rack where I didn't work for no one. That's the most loneliest stuff in the world because you calling people, you got money, but they got to go to work. And you're like, yo, we about to go do this? Nah, I got to work. Yo, let's go do this. I got to work. So it's like, tag, no matter how successful I am, I want other people with me to be just as successful. That's why I'm always like, like we can do this together. Let's let's rock out and do this together. I tell my brothers all the time, I wish we would have started a business together because we started J-Work together, but I was so young. I didn't know what I was doing. I made a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of arguing, fussing, and fighting because you want to be successful. You want your brother to be successful. You want your friends to be successful, but it may not work that way. God may have never planned it for you to do it with your friends. That's why people say in businesses, it's like, you can do it with your friends if you want to. That business may not do that well. There's very few that make it. So it's like, you got to put this down sometime, put the social media down and really put a perspective, pick up a book and say, yo, I'm going for this, for this reason. Why, what are my whys? Not to argue on social media, not for you to take something wrong that I didn't say it, that I might be passionate about something that I have not seen posted. Like for weeks, I got in an argument with someone about posting something that I didn't even know happened. I guess it happened a month ago, but I'm not on social media every day to look at the negative. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, that, that happened. You need to wake up. You need to, I'm looking like you're really passionate about what happened in the news. Yeah, man. It's tough because we're in that, uh, what they keep calling the era of outrage, man, yes. where everybody wants a reason to be mad or fired up or say that you went this way. You, you said this thing that was wrong. You slipped a tongue. You, you, you did different things that somehow offends someone. It's like yeah. everybody just wants to be offended. People By got, anything. People got to get off that because I know in some times people are doing it out of a good place in their heart where they kind of want to make sure people aren't getting hurt and this and that. But at the same time, man, worry about your own stuff. Yeah. Focus on your own life I and agree. stuff like that. And at, at the same time, none of us are perfect to be attacking somebody else and saying what they're doing. And I know there's definitely, at times, it's easy for someone to see someone that's worse than you. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, we all got our flaws, yeah, man. Focus man. on that. Yeah. Worry about that while you're doing that. Man. But what you saying, what you said about J work and stuff. Um, so give me a, a, a brief idea because I think it's things like this that can help people that are kind of having the same kind of thoughts of starting something up or trying something, whether it be a client. What what kind of like sparked you or, or where, where did you start like uh, getting that rolling? What was your first thought? Like, was it when you did the shirts like you were talking about of throwing the character on there or, yeah. and uh, it just rolled? Or? Yeah, basically, it, it I came home from Iraq and you got, like I said, I was off for a year. So I didn't go back to work because I, I planned it out. I said, okay, I'm saving all my money from Iraq. So we're getting five, six bands in Iraq. You was over there 18 months. You you do the math, you come home. It's like, if you didn't spend money, you know, I, and I'm cheap. I'm a cheap, oh, for Me real. Too. So, you know what I mean? I came home and I was like, dang, I, I can really just kind of chill. My my Me and my cousin's townhouse, like, it was like 800 a month. We split it 400. I'm like, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, what is everybody else doing? I started getting around all my brothers and friends. I was like, everyone's doing exactly the same thing they were doing when I left. And that made me realize I do not want to be in the same boat. You don't come from doing something that great, being hit by a bomb, being at war. You don't come home and just be the same person. So I was like, I got fidgety. I was like, yo, I want to do design. Okay, let's do clothing line. I was real big on for real, real big on uh, Dipset. I listened to them every day while I was in Iraq. 
uh, big Cameron fan. I was like, I'm gonna get, a, I'm gonna start a clothing line. I remember staying up all night, and that's when I came out with Justified Well for Real Kings, J Work for the Jumper. That's where J Work came from because I had a little jumper. Makes sense. But then Justified Well for Real Kings was like that. That put everything in perspective. I was like, I'm gonna do T-shirts. That's the easiest way to make money, and it worked. It just it worked like any idea I had. Now, for the first two or three seasons, what I mean by it worked, it didn't mean that the clothes was flying off the rack. What it meant was it worked for me. Being, If you know about PTSD, you know about being in Iraq, mo there's four or five soldiers that kill themselves every single day, right? Okay, and most of the time is they don't have a support system or they don't have a place to put that energy. So I put my energy into my brand. So it was like, well, how do you make the brand bigger? Okay, you invest your money. You buy the print machine. Uh, my, my good friend, Dan... He worked at the city center, not worked. He owned the airbrush shop at city center mall, uh, Dan Butler, Dangerous Arts. So we used to go in his shop after city center closed. Was that would, to do with the long hair? Yep. Oh, okay. That's one of my best yeah. friends, right? Gotcha. So he would let us go in there. And he has been an entrepreneur. So like that goes back to who did it first. Dan was in high school and he started the airbrush at the flea market at Northern Lights. He's always been an entrepreneur. So for him making a hundred grand when we're in high school, it's like Dan didn't clock in for nobody. The flea market was only booming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And he was making his money doing his art, doing his passion, doing his love. So he put that, I think he's the one that kind of brought it to the forefront for us. Like, Dad, you can own your own business. You could do your own thing. You're doing art? People buying it? What? You airbrushing Jordans? What? He instilled that so he will open up his shop to us and let us stay in there for hours after he's been in there all day to print shirts and would charge us the material only. So, you know, I'm charging, I, I came out the gates charging $55 a shirt or something crazy on some mad oversized shirt that was the style back then. And it was working. We were selling shirts and then Dan was like, you got to create a business. It's cool to sell shirts. But create a business with this. What you mean, Dan? Website. What's the story? Everybody needs to know your story. What's this? What's that? And he gave so much detail. It was like, I needed to know how to start a business. So for the first two or three years, it was mostly struggling to learn what a business is. Because anyone can sell a t-shirt. Anyone can make a product, change this bottle, paint it, and sell it. But what's the business to sell multiple of those T-shirts or this bottle or whatever, this book, for instance? It's like, that's the formula you need. It's like with rappers, like anyone, not anyone can rap, but if you can rap, that's great. But can you make, can you make a song? Can you freestyle? There's so much that comes into it. And I had to learn that. And it took about three to four years to learn that. And then three to four years, as soon as you think you on the up and up, MTV, BET, grandma passes away or she's going through that period of cancer where she's dying family turmoil is going on so it's like dad like i'm about to blow but i can't really blow because i, I want to scream about my grandma that my dad's not going to go really see the way he needs to so it's like j work helped with everything to keep me one focus because i think i would have went insane all the stuff i've been through with iraq and not really being there for my son while I was handling the military stuff, it affected me a lot. Like, dang, I'm a bad dad. I'm, I'm just as bad as the dude in jail. My mom would be like, no, you're not. You went to go serve your country. But my mind was telling me, you're not a good father. You're not a good dad. And I think that's the PTSD was playing tricks on me. That's kind of what happens with us soldiers. You might think something is bad. It's not really that bad, but the PTSD plays a trick on you to make you to become a loner, that's what the devil wants to get you alone. So you hurt yourself or you hurt someone you love. So J work basically saved my life. I, I really believe if I wasn't like it was meant to happen. It makes it so much sense now yeah, that you say that. It was meant that you to said happen that earlier. That yeah. way. Like it was meant for me to start a business and have focus on somewhere else other than myself or the things going around around me. So somebody, somebody that's do that's having that idea now though, or thinking maybe they want to do a, a, a clothing brand or even just a t-shirt line or something like that. What are some of the small things you would tell them is like things where you bumped your head or, or thought it would be like this, but it was really like this or something that maybe they could use a little bit. And I, it'd be a good bit of information for them. Um, any business just start, 
I mean, that that's the biggest thing, especially with me and my guys. We we thought too much. Oh, the T-shirt has to have this tag. It has to be cut this way. Is it need to be cut and sew? Just produce your first T-shirt. Just get that first T-shirt to all your family members. See how it's fitting. See how it's rocking. If they rocking it, let them be your advertisement. But just start. The easiest thing you can do is create a design and do the poor man's copyright. Draw it. Put in the new the mail to yourself. You own the rights to it. Keep it. But just produce it. What do you mean by that again? Just somebody that doesn't know. So basically, like, if you With have a logo, you draw it like we drew Sneaker Freaks. The poor man's copyright is make a copy of it, put it in the mail. That has a that has a date on it when it was oh, sent okay. to you. You own the rights to that. Got you. So it's just, it's just starting. Like, that, the most important thing you could do in business is just start. People sit there and they, they will, well... For a podcast, for instance, if you're oh, looking at I, other people's podcasts. I BS podcasts, for too long on this, man. Right, Honestly, right. I really did. If you look at other people's podcasts, you're like, how much money they put into it? You start overthinking mm -hmm. where you start getting the negative starts to come on your shoulder. And you're like, well, I, I don't really have that yet, so I won't do it. Go buy one t-shirt. There's so many print companies out here right now. You could print one design. And that one design sales, put it on a website and do pre-orders. There's so much you can do now. We didn't have social media when I first started. I think it might have been MySpace, and MySpace was phasing out at the time. So it wasn't like we ran to the internet and said, let me get my post up so people can like it and say they like this T-shirt. No, we went hand-to-hand. -hand yeah, I mean, if you were starting now, I mean, it probably would have oh, boomed man. even cra uh, so I much I think crazy. about it so many times. I yeah, look at yeah. people's brands. I'm like, dang, that's... I'm happy for them, but it's kind of whack. Mm -hmm. Social media is helping that thing grow. And you can't be mad at the people that have it now. Because I'm I'm mad I didn't start a social media platform. Right, Screw right. the t-shirts. I wish I would have did. Like, we got apps now. Mm -hmm. You know, I bought my son a, a soccer app that we designed. It's on the iPhone that he can log in and put his name in and see I have an app in the iStore. I'm, I'm more about... Just do it. I tell my son, whatever you want to do, I'll sign. I've been saving money my whole life for you. So whatever you want, I will do it. Just let's do it. Don't be one of those people that sit back and second guess because that's 90% of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super guilty of it, man. I'm super guilty of it with a lot of things. It's why I never started nothing before this. And it's why I wanted to start this probably five, six months before I did, if not mm -hmm. longer, and I BS. I mean, it's 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 weird that a lot of us have that built in, man, and I don't know why that self-doubt. And I think some of it is maybe like the parenting or how you yes. come up and things like that. But sometimes it's just a personality thing too. Yeah. Like your personality, you're just not that mm -hmm. super cocky person or or you just don't have the faith in your abilities. business side. You yeah. know what I mean? Your abilities. business abilities, yeah. 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 But uh, uh, I, I think... From the outside looking in for me too, like with the t-shirt thing or like the clothing brand, I think you really hit the nail on the head too. Even though I haven't done it, but what I see from people, I, I think it does make so much more sense when people have some kind of story with it. Yeah. Because I see some people and I've dealt with some people and I've even done modeling for a lot of different people. And I see stuff where people don't know what your what your brand is about. Yeah, or what what's your it, or, vision. Or yeah, e even past that, just like, what it means or what the name means or what what uh what is your reason for starting it or yeah. what like i like the things like even something like tacma or something yeah. uh some of the other brands where they really like put out a vibe or a thought yeah. process yeah. you know what i mean to where people not only like it because you make dope stuff yeah. but then also they're like i agree with that I'm or that's that story yeah, yeah yeah or that's how i look at the world or yeah yep. or that's i agree yeah yeah I agree. and I, I i think from what i've seen lately i think that's what really makes the difference in a brand doing well as opposed to yes the social media factor is huge Ooh, how huge. you advertise all those other things and like i said this isn't something that i've done but i've got to see a lot of people recently do it or try it or, and and it really is if somebody has that combo of putting out a good product plus that story with yeah. it it seems like it's where it really that's goes. why that's why like you said like if i would have came out now i always think if i was like 26 years old and i started j work now it would have been out of here because we made it to BET MTV yeah. with phone calls. We got on Karma Loop 
uh, kibosh from a phone call and people seeing what we did at the magic show. It's like, man, that's when social media just kind of started picking up. We was making posts, not really knowing what to do with it at the time. We didn't know how to go viral. We didn't know how to do any of that. But it was just a fact that we just did it. That's one thing that I do pride my my brothers on who are my friends. You know what I mean? They they took the ride with me. They seen something and said, we're going to, hey, you want to go to Vegas? You want to get 5500 for a booth? Okay. How are we going to make the money? I said, I have concepts. We're going to make this money. We're going to throw a party. That's two grand right there. We're going to have car washes. That's 1500 right there. You know, we're going to do whatever we need to do. And then a lot of things happened too. MGK blew up. He wore, when he first blew up, he wore one of our shirts, Money Cash Clothes. And that shirt went viral off of him and what he did. And I never, when he won the Ohio Hip Hop Best Rapper, we won the best clothing brand. We MGK and us are so close. They gave our award to him because I couldn't come that Friday to get it. He had it for me that Saturday. It's on YouTube. Me and him went to go eat lunch. He, he was a super blew cool up. dude, man. I randomly yeah, met him. I seen, uh, I seen the Martin. picture. Of it was you. yeah, it was the I craziest seen, thing ever, man. His story, dad being in the military, just his story alone of how he, you know, went and lived in Ashley's his manager, lived in her house in Cleveland in the basement. Slim, his best friend. See, I know the whole story. But when he blew, I never tried to ride his coattail. Mm. It's not who I am. Yeah, I understand that. You know what I mean? So I was like, Dag, you made it. Dope. He came here for like a really big show. I was sick. My business partners who my brothers went, they was like, MGK changed, man. He just a, he a monster now. And I knew it. When I was bringing him here, he was at parties with me. And people was like, who's this guy? Who's this white rapper? I'm like, he cold. When you I'm, don't got to believe me. Yeah. You don't got to believe me. And my dudes, they're in the hip hop community to, to this day now. They're like, I remember when you brought MGK here. I had a birthday party. And he was supposed to perform, but the microphones went out. And he didn't want to perform. I was like, don't do not do it if it's going to mess up your brand. Mm -hmm. But he's all in all the pictures. Like, I knew he was going to be dope. And to see what he's doing now, to see him in the movies now, we always be like, Dad, that's our bro. Oh, he's really doing it now. Yeah, yeah. You the movies I mean? and stuff, that's where you really take to a whole nother yeah, level. Like, Those checks man, are coming. Yeah. But yeah, the, it's funny. The the story with me seeing it, meeting him and stuff was so crazy because I was just in St. Martin. I just went there for vacation, like I was telling you, flying for free with my uh, job or flying for really cheap out of the country and stuff. Yeah. I just took a trip to burn some vacation time at the end of the year around, like just before Christmas and around my birthday. And, uh, the one night, I'm just like, man, I really don't know what to do here. I went by myself. Um, and I was just like, I really don't know what to do or where to go tonight, this and that. So I just go driving around, catch this little beach party for a little while. I was kind of jumping. It was cool. Hung out there for a while. Met some people there. And they're like, you want to come with us to the next spot? This time, I'm like, yeah, I don't have no idea what to do here. Yeah. So I go with them to another little spot. And then they're like, okay, like right next door is this... Uh, uh, is a, is a club, and there's a little strip club right beside it. But first, we go into the bigger club. We go into the big club. It's dead in there. It's yeah, dead. Yeah. I'm in there for like maybe 15, 20 minutes, kind of like, man, I'm about to bounce or something yeah. like that. And all of a sudden, I hear the DJ, and the DJ was uh, had a little accent, so I couldn't understand a ton of what he was saying this and that. But I hear him say something like, oh, we got stars in the building tonight, this and that, blah, blah. And I'm just like, it's dead in here. What is this dude talking about? Yeah. But uh, the funny thing was, uh, he had been playing a bunch of Drake songs. And then I hear him say, we got Drake in the building. I'm like, this dude's out of his mind. Like, he's talking crazy or Man. whatever. Sure enough, I look over and Drake is walking up into their little VIP. Um, and at this time, like I said, the club is dead. Yeah. So it really threw me off. So he walks up into there. And uh, sure enough, like, I walked closer to make sure I was really seeing what I was seeing. <laughs> and it was, man. And he got on the mic for a minute, whatever. It's not. I'm like, that's just a crazy coincidence that yeah. it's just he happened to be here. Well, then... Uh, after being there for a while and they shut down, then the people asked me, like, you want to go next door with us to the strip club? I'm like, sure, let's go over and check it out for a while. We walk in there. I don't think I was in there two, three minutes, and I see MGK in there. And I said something to one of them, like, y'all know who that is over there? And they was like, no, yeah. this not. I'm like, oh, it's MGK, this not. And they're still just looking at me like blank. Because also back then, like you said, a lot of people didn't know who he was. Yeah. And he wasn't really that hot yet. Yeah. Man, I went over to talk to him, coolest dude on the planet. He's, like he's off the chain. Yeah, yeah, man, super down to earth. Talked to me yeah. like yeah, he like had always known. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't treat me no kind of way. This and that, whatever. It was like I asked him. I was like, man, you want to grab a drink or this and that? Because we started talking for a minute. Because I was yeah. telling him like I'm from Ohio too. This yep, and that, yep, whatever. Yep. 
cool as the fan, man. And it was, it was, a, it was a dope experience, but it was also crazy for me that I'm like, out of nowhere, I'm in some place where it's just like dead. I don't know what to do with my time. And I just happened to stumble in a place that Drake's in there. I go to the next place, MGK's in there. I'm like, it was a wild, it was a wild story, of course, yeah. like a story to tell and, and the thing to go to. And uh, it was, it was really cool to see how yeah. he was, man. Yeah. And then going forward and seeing him blow up now, I really, even though I don't have a close connection like yeah. you do, yeah. it still kind of gave me like, yeah. I love seeing it in him because yeah. I'm like, it's a cool dude. Yeah. So I love seeing that happen to him on top of the fact yeah. he's from yeah. Ohio. Yep. Which makes it Same, even better. Man. Same. He was just in the movie uh, Bird Box too that everybody's talking. Oh, about. Oh, was he? Okay, yeah. yeah. He was in there too. The, the first one I seen was the uh, what was the one where they were doing like the dares? Cleveland? Is it? Is uh? No, the one where they were doing like the dares uh, or the uh, uh, where like he was driving on the motorcycle. Uh, I think it was him at that part driving with the motorcycle with blindfolded. Oh it yeah, might not yeah, have, yeah. Oh no, nah, it wasn't him that was driving the motorcycle, but that he nerve, was, nerve. Yeah, yeah. Nerve. I was talking about the one that they shot in Cleveland. It's called the Land. Dope movie. The dude that just shot that. I haven't seen it. I have to yeah, check it out. Dope. It's on Netflix. And the dude that just shot that, he just shot Creed 2. Okay. So they're building something. Like that dude is from Cleveland. He shot the land. His next movie's Creed 2. Mm. So just imagine the oh, network. Oh, yeah. That that, and doing. that progression, man. That's <laughs> from great. the land yeah. doing 50,000 yeah. to boom. Now you're shooting Creed 2. It's like they're building something. Michael B. Jordan, all of them are building a network of movies and directors. They're building something, and people don't even see it. I go to the dude's page. I'm like, oh, man, this dude, he on Instagram. He got a 1,000 followers. He's shooting Creed too. Now people know who he is, blown up, changed his whole life. I'm like, the, the movie The Land is, is amazing. So it's like you got to start something. That's what I'm saying, just by starting, just do it. Just jump in. I don't know how to do it. I don't have all the equipment. It don't matter. You can shoot a podcast with your phone now. Yep. Yeah, we jump talked in. about that. Yeah. You can design t-shirts from your phone now. Mm -hmm. Jump in. Just jump in. Like Even throwing parties when I was throwing parties, I didn't know how to do it. I just saw other cats do it. I was like, I'm about to go out to this neighborhood no one's at and throw my own party and make my own money. I don't want to be a promoter. I want to hold, host events. So... That's why I was brought into the things I was brought into to always make cash. You could always start your own party if you got people. I think the uh, the car wash gym you dropped on people. Yeah. I think that's that's something that I never thought about, and it's huge, man. Throw a little car crazy. wash, make you some crazy, make you a nice little chunk of money to then Invest use it to go at, yeah else. after yeah. What, what you want. We didn't even know what it in. was then. It was like let's throw a car wash with the models. What? Yeah, and you don't even gotta have models. If you know a couple girls that are decent looking that are willing to help you out or family members, they didn't even have bathing suits on. That's what I'm saying. It was like people just gravitated towards it, and I'm, we did it in our neighborhood. So people was like, "Oh, Jermaine, Jermaine's doing it." So then instead of ten cars, you might have fifty cars. Yeah, and you can do it with kids. And for the people that don't want to do it because they don't yeah. want to exploit women, this and that, whatever, or feel like they're exploiting women, you can do it with kids. Yeah. You can do it like you said, doing a thing like offering a. Free ones for yeah. the veterans that come through, that's like what, you that's said. That's what you we did. killed on. I mean, veterans was just pulling up, like, man, my car's already done because most vets keep their car done. But here, here go fifty dollars to whatever y'all doing. So we took the money and we used it for our business. We invested in our business. We invested in travel to Vegas. We paid for everybody's trip to go to Vegas off the car washes we did. I think in six weeks. <laughs> I mean, my whole team went to Vegas. I was doing crazy stuff like the photographers flicks. Um, I, my photo shoot in San Diego, I was like, yo, Flix, I'll pay for you to go to San Diego. This is where my mindset was. I'll pay for you to go to San Diego with us. I'll pay for your flight and your room. You shoot everything. So instead of you charging me five, $600, I might be able to get away with four fifty, five hundred. You might, an all day shoot might've cost me three fifty in Columbus. But if I got to shoot seven days, 300, say if you give me a discount, 175, that's still way more than I would have paid. He flew out to uh, San Diego with us. I We had an open call on like, I don't even know what we put it on. Hey, can you guys models meet us here? We're not even from San Diego. They showed up. We went to the club. We met Kid Cuddy. Kid Cuddy was amazing. He's a dope person in real life before he blew up. I don't know what he's into now, but he was amazing. He took shirts from us. I have all that documented. Like, we just went and was on some gorilla stuff, like pop up to a club. Hey, you look decent. We got to shoot tomorrow. Meet us at this hotel. 
these kids in San Diego follow us around the whole day. They shot all day, eight hours. I took them to Wendy's. They ate. I went and did that in Miami before there was an Airbnb. I was renting houses in Miami off the strip, taking my dudes down there. Yo, we got five bedroom house. We don't know what we're doing, but it's a J work photo shoot. Open model call at our house. Here go the location. Post it wherever. We was putting it on 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 a little uh, biller things, giving people business cards. We're at this house. I remember a model from the Miami Dolphins came to our house and she shot with us. Her name is Stephanie. She's uh, in Canada, adult model, Asian and like Amer American, Asian and white, super dope. But just to have her come through the house, like, ain't a Miami heat chill. I'm like, you're a Miami. How did you find out about J work? Like, I saw the post. I'm coming. I boom. We had a photo shoot. Bam. That it sounds like to everything that you're saying. It it just reminds me. I think it reinforces what you're saying. Of just start, just, just try do it. because you'd be from what I'm hearing. I'm amazed. So I think a lot of people would be amazed with if they just tried. If they just shot yeah. their shot. If they just just do it. Yeah, just and see do what it. Would we we was flying out places. We was doing things where now with social media it'd be way easier. But we found a way to do it. And that trip, Flicks got for free again. You got a free room. You shoot everything. Well, and that's what it sounds like. It sounds like not only some of the people around you, but even you got some crazy dope experiences. Yeah. And and cool stories and and events and all types of things. And at the same time, was gain, you were gaining knowledge. You were learning things. Correct. You were you were making money. You were making moves. So I mean, it's being a good businessman also means just always doing good business. I've never done anyone wrong. So like. If I didn't have the money or the team didn't have the money at the time, I would say, I'll buy you that camera. That camera's 1200 I need three seasons of my J-Work t-shirts done for free. So I give you the concept. I give you the design. My boy, Jerry, he still works with me close to this day. I We worked together so long. I could just, the, the new uh, Sneaker Freaks um, flyer is Goku, where I'm big in Dragon Ball. I'm big in that, that growth he's had. The, the battles he had to go through when people say, you're never going to beat me. That that stuck with me watching that growing up. So I, I use it to everything that I'm doing. I'm like, you know what, Jaren, I know you want that camera. That camera's going to get you multiple business concepts, ideas, whatever. Can you do this? Everything I put on the table for him to do that this brain thinks of, he kills it. He's like, you know, I've never done that before. Give me a week. And he kills it every single time. So now we got like a, I can text him an idea right now and I'll send him a sketch, find some some things off the internet that I think is I'm, my mind is going towards. He kills it. But I the way I put him on retainer is, yo, I bought you that camera. I need 50 shirt designs. If you're charging me $25 per shirt anyway, that camera's $1,200. let us do the math. That camera's going to bring you more money, and then when you come around to do something else for me, don't come charging me what you would charge somebody you don't know. I'm now family. So we don't worked out deals. Like, Jaren does stuff pro bono for me, but I kick back. Oh, Sneaker Freaks, is, we just got paid from Sneaker Freaks. Here goes some extra. Keep it coming. You always got to do more for people that's been in your corner. These people, I don't talk to them every day, but when I got a concept, if I text them right now, 24 hours, Jerry has a text to me. What are we doing now? He's never said that's a bad idea. Sometimes it gets on my nerves. <laughs> but he's always like, let's push the envelope. Let's do it. Just do it. No matter what, I don't care if it's whack. I, I don't put a, we don't produce probably 50 whack t-shirts. But I needed to see what they look like so I can say, that's whack. I'm never producing that. Sometimes you got to check yourself too. Like, that's not good enough. I know I can do better. Like I just did a Dragon Ball shirt based on Dragon Ball Super that sold out quietly 20 shirts. I it's still so I'm still doing J work. Every sneaker freaks, I designed all our sneaker freaks shirts. All the kids wearing the sneaker freaks shirts, that's still J work producing those shirts. Oh, I still okay. design them. It's just that it's not it doesn't say J work on them, but I'm still designing. So even though I'm not doing J work, it's like we should do shirts for sneaker freaks. I'm like, nah, I don't really. Let me try it. Then kids are like, I collect all the sneaker freak shirts. I collect all the badges. That's my concepts, my design. So, yeah, I'm not doing J work, but I'm doing it a different route. It's just called sneaker freaks now. I'm like, my boy said, 
you're still J work to everyone. Yeah, well, and this progression apparently was made to, was meant yeah. to happen, man. Yeah, it really it, that's what it really seems like to me. It seems like it was supposed to evolve that yeah. way, and you know how it goes too. I hear a lot of people say it that like you're learning from Things where like, you started yeah, and from correct. the J work and how to use it in yeah. these other things and yeah. these other other. So I'm avenues. still him. I'm still it, but I'm just using it to my ability now. It's like designing a T-shirt twice a year is nothing compared to when I was like. Oh, I need to have a Press. season worth of 10 t-shirts, two hoodies, three jackets. I'm like, man, I, I was going crazy. But I was putting contact. I, I, I learned so much that now doing it with Sneaker Freaks is, is cakewalk. It's like mm. coming up with a concept right after the show, I already have another idea for the next show. The flyer. The flyer gets the kids going. We posted that the Dragon Ball one on Christmas Day or whatever. People went nuts. When is the show? And I'm like, we don't know yet. We might rebrand it. We might reframe it. It's time to build it better. It's time to get rid of negative things that are going on in, in the company to make it grow better. You don't just keep doing the same thing, hoping for different results. I want exactly. Sneaker Freaks to be the biggest show in Ohio ever. So it's like, how do you do that? Just do it. Just do it, man. Oh, that's why I tell everybody just I do love it. Hearing that, yeah. man. I love hearing that because it because you live it. So 100%. for me, somebody that hasn't done that type of stuff, but at the same time, I can watch you or other people do it and then say that it's like that's where to me it makes so much sense. Or to me, I think it's something that other people should really pay attention to. Yeah, because you're living it, you're showing yeah. it. You're you're not somebody that's just talking it. Like I always tell people when with me doing this, I feel like I'm just talking. So don't listen to what I'm saying on on here. Yeah, I agree. And, and don't pay close attention to the the aspects that I'm saying of business or this and that because I'm I'm just a guy on here that's providing this avenue. Yep. Listen to the people like you and the other people I bring on here that have yeah. done it, made it happen, and it's it's successful. Yeah. And the Sneaker Freaks thing, I've I've watched it because I remember I don't know if I came to the you the it was first like the first one. one. It was the first one. Because you had the LeBron's championships. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the very first one. Yeah. And I came to that one and and it blew my mind. Same thing, like you were saying. I, I see all the people as I'm going to park. Like, man, all these people are headed here, and moms carrying boxes of shoes for the kids, and and just people bringing huge bags full of stuff, and people got a uh, five six pair tied around their necks, trying to carry them on their the shoulders. Culture. Like, yeah, man, the it, culture, it's man. it's it's I I didn't know how big that culture had remained. Cause, yeah. And maybe that's what you were saying by wondering, like, oh, do they still stand in line? Yeah, and same. I didn't know either, man. I didn't know that it had still continued to be that it's big insane. to so many people and yeah. so many kids. Yeah, the kids took it over. Yeah. It's their market. Now. Yeah, oh, yeah. The younger, and, and there's a lot of young entrepreneurs in it, man. There's because a lot of them of that are making, yeah, that are making, because they, I think they, flipping the sneakers and stuff seemed like it kind of molded them into learning how to do business and how Correct. to how to Correct. swap things, how to make the right connections and relationships. And I agree. Yeah, man. And they use it. Created and, that. Yeah. We created that. Oh, avenue, I definitely, that give, you guys, I definitely yeah. give you guys some of the yeah, credit, man. man. I we definitely created do. that here. It, it, it makes it dope. Like kids, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, making three, four five grand for a couple hours worth of work and parents shaking my hand saying, Hey, my kid started their own business because of this sneaker show. It's like, like, I didn't have this avenue growing up. There was no sneaker show in Columbus, Ohio until Sneaker Freaks was formed. So we created, the newspaper said, some of the biggest the, the biggest hub for the youngest entrepreneurs in the Midwest was started from Sneaker Freaks. That's facts. That's printed. And it's like, we just did it. These kids probably, that's why, that's why I said just do it. Because if an 11-year-old said, I'm a buy, mom, buy me a $50 table. They just took a leap of faith. That's all it is. They had shoes sitting around. That's every business. Yeah, and you, you probably had some of them that didn't ask mom. There's probably some of them that did something like you talked about. They went and mowed a couple yards or they Correct. went they made it happen if they didn't have the mom. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people that may say, well, oh, I, I, I don't have the mom that I can just ask like that or I'm not that. Yeah, you like can you come said, some grass. oh, it must be nice. This not. Nah, man. There's always someone yeah, that I can agree. figure out a way to make to it make happen. Some and I'm sure there was at yeah. that. I'm sure there's at every show there's kids. Okay, correct. That made it happen. There's, there's kids that. You see them come in there and they're like, there is no parent. They're like, I got the $50. They might have five grand on them. They made it happen. Like, how is this kid? Oh, I flip shoes. That's the new way to sell drugs legally without 
going to jail. Yeah. Mur- now, now, granted, it is dangerous if you're meeting up with people. Mm-hmm. You got to meet people at malls and things of that nature. But you can flip shoes online now. Stock X, they make it so easy. You get the product, you can sell it. You get your percentage. You make your money. I know a guy. He made. He's like at sixty grand off of Stock X. I mean, like that's sitting at home twiddling. That's that's real Twitter fingers. That's really playing on it. That's what I'm saying. Like social media is a gift and a curse because you can make buku money off of social media if you just take out the negative and actually use it for what it's meant for. Or you got the the bad side of social media where everybody's retweeting dinner, everybody's just talking, just chasing talking. the drama. Correct. Yep, yep. Well, and even with you saying the stuff about like the kids making that kind of money and and all that, uh, it's crazy that around that same time, like a little bit before the show and everything, when I went and bought those, uh, I won the raffle to to get that championship <laughs> yeah. pack. When I got there, I check. I'm up there like getting ready to go to the counter and show my ticket and all that, and a dude walks up to me. He's like. Hey, you come for the championship pack? And I was just like, and this was a, just a dude in a store that wasn't a work or nothing. And I'm just like, yeah, how'd you know that? Whatever. He's like, size 10 and this and that. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I've been waiting here all day for you. And I'm like, huh? And he's like, because I was, then back then I was real blind to the culture and yeah. how it went and stuff. Yeah. So I come, I, he approaches me with that and I'm just like, yeah, why, what's up? This and that. And why, why you been waiting all day? And it was me and my nephew in there. And uh, he's like, I'm a reseller, man. He's like, I buy, I flip them, this, snap, whatever, blah, blah. He's like, I'll give you, and I don't remember what it was at the time, but I want to say, I want to say it was like three grand yeah. that he was telling me right then and there. The pack was 500 because it was two shoes with the box and everything, the bags and all that. And he was like, I'll give you this three grand right now. As soon as you buy them, you hand, he was like, or he was like, let me buy them for you. You don't even got to spend your money and ever have it come out of your account, this and that. And he, and he pulls the money out. Dude was, I think he was 18. I don't even think he was 19 yet because I ended up asking him and then I got him on <coughs> social media because he was like, I was like weary of the situation just because it was all brand new he to me. I was like, yeah. what is he doing? I'm like, oh, he has to be getting me too if he's just ready to drop that much. That means he can flip them for this much more. Yeah. So I kind of was weary and I didn't want to do it and this and that. And, uh, but he's like, he's like, look at me on social media. This night, he's like, he's like, I'm telling you, this is what I do. I'm not trying to get you. This and that, blah blah. He's like, I'm paying you. You, you probably won't get even what I'm giving you out of him. Honestly, he's like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being real with you. And I just wasn't trusting him. I just, yeah. that's just who I am. I don't yeah. trust people like that, especially yeah. somebody yeah. I don't know. And yep. it's hard to believe in that situation. But uh, so I didn't end up selling him to him. But then I had him on social media and all that. And uh. He, I ended up seeing him post and he even talked a little bit about it before we went, before we parted ways that day. He was saying that from flipping shoes and this and that, he had bought and paid off two different cars, bought one for his dad and paid it off. And then he was getting ready to start at, uh, I don't know if it was either Kentucky or Louisville University. And he said his tuition was already fully paid. Off all, the shoes. all from Sneakers. flipping the shoes before he had even turned 19. Yeah. I agree. It was crazy. And then as I, as I got to uh, follow his page and stuff, it was nuts to, to follow him because he was supplying different sports players, different celebrities with super uh, hard to get exclusive shoes mm-hmm. and stuff. And what he had started doing was uh, when he was giving them or getting them for people that like played for Kentucky or played for Louisville or uh, celebrities or whoever this not, but especially the players that he was dealing with at Kentucky and Louisville and all that. Yeah. They were in turn like either trading him or giving him pairs of their Kentucky exclusives. Their player Louis, issues. The player issues. The Louisville Keys. exclusives, whatever. Yep. Yeah. And then he was flipping <clears throat> those and selling those to people for crazy prices. Which it was like, I'm like, man, this dude, it's he insane. really, really rolled with it, man. He and he got really it. and look what he made happen before he ever even turned nineteen. Yeah. It was nuts, man. So I seen that firsthand through seeing the people at your shows yeah. and then even dealing with that kid. Yeah, and and, and I regretted insane. it later too because he was right. He was honest with me. Yeah, I wasn't able to get what he was offering me. Yeah, and he was being straight up with me, telling yeah. me like, "Hey, they're they're going to go for about this, whatever this and that." And he was being straight up. It was a learn learning lesson for me, yeah. but it was also cool for me to just yeah I see agree. that see that side of it and go through that experience, and it, it made me understand more about the sneaker freaks. It was another reason why. I came there and came to your first one on top of trying to support yeah. you just knowing you and that yeah. you were at the Macy's thing and yeah. all the kind of circle we yeah. were starting to get all yeah. more involved yeah. in this and that. But it, it was cool to see, man. And the way that Sneaker Freaks, or Sneaker Freaks has really blown. Yeah. And then you guys have an app and stuff now too, right? Yep. 
I mean, that's it's crazy. just it's just it's just keep growing, man, and it's like it's organic because everything you said realistically, we never said anything about money. If you notice that, I never said about money. It's just about doing it. I don't care about the money. That's why I say I changed faith, family, fitness, financial freedom to freedom. It's not about the money. If you're doing it for the money, then I don't even want to be in business with you, to be honest with you, because that's not, I'm passionate about what the opportunity brings to other people. I love, I'm talking about how much the kids make. The kids make good money. So then in return, it's like, I'm doing my job. I'm doing, that's like God gave us abilities to do things. So the ability to create things is an ability. So if I'm creating things and people are making money from it, it's like, dang, dope. Hopefully yeah, my son will see that. Yeah, you're supplying for other people. You're supplying opportunity for other people, man, which Correct. is awesome. I know, and especially for, the kids. For you to even say uh, your son to see it, I seen how that was affected. I seen your son selling the socks. Yeah, right. Is he still doing that at yeah, all? Yeah, no. Well, so, so what I did with that, I was like, yo, got sneaker freaks. Sometimes you fall asleep in the back because you, you got it made. My, my boys would be climbing, like, look at your son sleep in the back. Rich kids sleep in the back. I'm like, nah, bro. So I was like, listen, what you want to do? I'm going to get a booth. What you going to sell? Okay. So you and, my, so you and your brother going to sell socks. Socks goes with sneakers. I'm going to buy the supply of socks. So I bought like five locks of them. I bought, was the first customer. I spent like 100 I bought the lots for them. Then I spent the 100 I'm like, I'm going in debt for y'all, mm -hmm. right? But I'm like, sell these, sell these socks to give them a sense of urgency for one, whatever money they made is their money. I don't even want my investment back. It's more about y'all learning to make money on your own. If I teach you how to make money, then you'll never be broke. You'll never go hungry. So I always say, in like my Instagram post, I said, my kids is watching, my sons is watching. I really believe that they're watching. They're watching the Instagram, Drake, they're watching, uh, Dave East, they're watching these model vixens. You don't believe they're watching the parents in the house? They are watching. They are like, for sure, man. That, that a lot of times that's the closest. That's the the thing they're watching the most is is the parents because that's who they spend the most time correct. around at an early age. Correct. Yeah, as they get a little bit older, your time Things with change. them. Yeah, and your time with them. They it, sometimes the the friends or the social media stuff kind of has more time, and you do your best to try to reel that back. If correct. you're, I think so. If yeah. you're like a parent that really wants to have them on the right track. I, I agree. So like with, with parenting, I think that if you put your kids in the right position to win, they will win. They're going to veer off because that's what kids do regardless. But I'd rather them be looking at, dad, is that what dad did? Or am I worried about what Drake did for a million people in college? Like that's not real life for you. This is like, we have an opportunity for you to be an entrepreneur. If you want to, you want to go to college, go to college. My thing is just do something. That's what I told my son. My daughter's in school. She's in her second year at Akron. She's doing really well. My son's about to graduate in three months, four months. I'm like, what is the plan of action? Like, these kids are so different now. I wanted to drive when I was in ninth grade. These kids now, these boys, they're like sitting back. I'll take Uber. I don't even want to take my driver. Like, it's like, it's so different now. That's mm -hmm. why I said... Social media and the things that's going on now is hindering them from trying to step out and be a little bit more independent. Okay. My son has a job, but it's like, do you want a job? Like, I never had to be asked that I want a job. I wanted Jordan, so I wanted a job to pay for the Jordans. I couldn't sell drugs, and my parents would kill me, so I needed that job. But when you're providing so much, you tend to, like, me and my boys talk about I was like, are we providing too much? Mm -hmm. They go to every Marvel movie. They have... $50 worth of spending money at the movies. Is it because I want them to have more than I had? I didn't go to every movie. I didn't have every Jordan until I started working. My dad used to tell me, hey, see that guy on the bus stop? He got Jordans on, though. My dad would tell me that. I'd be like, what you mean? Got the Jordans on. He's at the bus stop with Jordans on. Mm -hmm. Them $200 pair of Jordans was probably a car payment. And, I, and it stuck with me. Those type of conversations happened. I was like, well, I don't want to be on the bus with Jordans on. But I want to be in my car with Jordans on. These kids nowadays, they either got the, the spirit to go after things or they don't. It's just that simple. You can see it. It's weird, I think, because I think a little bit about myself. Like, uh, 
we had times that our family was strapped, but we also had a decent amount of time that we were kind of like content, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And straight and stuff like that. And I, I hear a lot of people talk about this. I've even listened to the a guy that I listen to this, a, a psychologist talk a little mm -hmm. bit about it. And it's, uh, uh, and even Joe Rogan mentioned it a lot too, of saying how like the people that don't have a lot of times that's that fire in them is cause that's right. what it creates is you have to go chase it. So it's really hard for us that do kind of that are feeling stable and want to like provide. give our provide and give our kids a good life or give better life than us. Sometimes I think it's hard and and I'm doing my best to kind of try to like prepare my mind because my daughter's so young and I haven't experienced a lot of things that you have or people that have older kids that where I'm trying to tell myself like man like I feel like I need to give a little here but pull a little bit back here and and not be because I noticed it in myself like. I felt like that's why I got such a late start in trying to go after something yeah. and really have that motivation or that drive is because it was like that contentment man. and just yeah, like, I, agree. I feel like in a ways that feeling content and having a lot of the things that you need, yeah, it hinders you because it's like, what are you chasing then? Yeah. What's your why? Yeah. It's, and it's hard. And I, and I don't want it to be for my kids that they want to because they don't have nothing or nothing yeah. like that. So it's a weird balance of like, well, then how do you find how to plug that into them? It's and hard. I, yeah. Oh, I can't you imagine, gotta, man. Gotta, I want to try my best. Yeah, to you got to create opportunity. You got to create opportunities for them to grow without you looking. The best way to see someone is to not look at them. When you're not looking at them or when you're looking at them, they're always on their best behavior. Jay Z said that, and yeah, what he meant yeah. by that obviously is one of my if favorite I'm always, videos. If I'm always handing out, you know, tickets to go play the video game, you're never gonna want to beat the game because you always got tickets to play the game. So it's like I got to create opportunities for my sons to get out and get it on their own. Like, yo, let's you want to sell some socks? That's your money. Learn to run a business. Split it with your brother. If you make I don't know, 500 bucks, you take 60%, give your brother 40. That's learning numbers. Like what my son now, I'm like, do you want to put money in a bank account? Yes. Let's go start a bank account. Cool. How much you want to put in your bank account? Uh, I'm going to put 60% in my bank account. So I'm like, you sure? So you might make 120 a week. So you're going to keep 40, 50 bucks. Cool. I'm happy with that. Cause I'm like, until you're 18, you're putting money in the bank and he's learning a little bit. But the hunger I had, it's just not there. It's totally different because I was actually hungry. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at, man. Yeah, it's gonna man. be hard for us. It's gonna be, it's gonna yeah. be hard for us to try to figure out ways to implement that. It's crucial into kids that already kind of have what they want, or you know what I mean, or what they might. I'm learning that from basketball with my my son now. I'm like, he goes to all these trainings. I pay for him. I'm like, there was none of this when I grew up. It's just you go to the court and get ran. Off the off the floor. That was how you learn. Yeah, you yeah. learn. Now. I gotta get better because if not, I'm not playing. I gotta yeah. sit on the sideline. I gotta sit on the sideline, or you get pickup games. You're not getting picked up. You're like, bro, what happened? Like, man, remember that last game last week? You you turned the ball over. Like, so you had to get better in everything. You had to compete, and these kids don't have to compete. They they almost feel like it's supposed to be given to them. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a, it's a balance of how to do it, and I have not mastered it. I cannot say I have. It's just I'm trying everything. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if anybody has, man, yeah. if, or anybody will master it. But I think I'm going to do my best, man, to try to just like. <laughs> it's crucial. Like, like I said, almost like throw darts at it, like try different ways of things to see what motivates her. And I think maybe that might be yeah. the key because I see it in some other parents and, and some people that uh, post a lot about it online and stuff. And, I, and it makes me think like maybe that's the route to go is you have to find what does motivate them since like in your situation the money is not motivating them yeah. or the or the or the clothes or the material yeah. items aren't because they have that so maybe we have to try to really dig to find what does motivate them do they like the feeling of this certain thing you know yeah. what i mean do they like competition do they like whatever it is that really drives do they like it. doing art do they like something that we can try to just like focus on who they are as an individual yep. and their little weird personalities. Yeah. And maybe, ma yeah, it's maybe, crucial. maybe that's the thing. But I, it's going to, it's, it's going to, I know it's going to be a, crucial. Roller, a roller crucial, coaster ride yeah. for me for sure, man. But, uh, so the, do you, you really get to see a lot of the impact from this on your kids where you think that they, that even some of the other kids, cause you talked a lot about your son, but do you think that they're, going to somewhat gravitate towards that way of wanting to be their own 
bosses and things like that and, because and a, of what they see from you and because of how social media is nowadays? Because yeah, I feel like that's yeah, because Like my daughter, right? She's in school and she's a hard worker. Um, she's get She gets phenomenal grades and that's her lane. She wants to be a doctor. Mm. And I'm like, let's do it. My thing is just do it. Like, I, I put her in a position to be an entrepreneur. She did some things that she liked to do, but she she's in school and she's like, I want to get my degree. Her mom is like, let's get this degree. I'm like, I'm never against you getting a degree. Let's do it, but let's just be smart about how we do it. If we're going to get a degree, let's get a degree that you can use universally. Like, you can go anywhere you want to as a doctor. Right, right. Oh, I think doctor's a big one that... I like anywhere in the world, that. anywhere in the world, you can be used. Yeah, because there's a lot of degrees that are kind of throwaway, man. That I think a lot of people don't think about. Yeah, and I, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, if you have a plan of action, then let's execute it. And as long as you have a plan, I'm a hundred percent for it. She wants to be a doctor, let's go for it. The medical field, you'll always need. That will always need you. Like even with my son, if he says I want to go to college for this, I'm like, all right, what's to pay for that? How many jobs? What's the demand? What's the demand for yeah, that? Yeah, I think you know you're right mean? on the money. Man. So it's like, great. Is that your passion? If it is, cool. If that's your passion, let's think about a side hustle with that passion. Because a doctor, all you need to do is be a doctor. But in graphic design, you might make 50, 60K a year. That might be great for you. That might be good. But you could also have a side hustle as a graphic designer. So that's if he wants to go that route, I'll teach him that. It's just about doing it. That's the main thing. So... Oh, no. I mean, I think you're, like I said, I think you're right on the money. And I think that, I think that, like I said, I think they will pick up a lot of that and seeing you and being that close to it and all that. I think when you get to witness it firsthand, it's totally different, man, because we can get on here and talk and people can watch this and stuff and, and, and take it how they want or pay as much attention to it as they want. But something for me was seeing it in my wife. I've seen her do her thing with her business and things like that. And that's where it really made me get to witness it firsthand and see even more so than like we said of like seeing somebody, oh, I grew up with this person or this and that. When you see it in home, it's I different. think that's I think that's when it really changes and lets you know like uh the the, the the capabilities yep. and how much more real it could be for you. I agree. But uh another thing I mentioned already but I really wanted to get into. So with seeing you do get up and do the five AM workouts and this and that, like I told you it's a huge motivation for me and I hope more people like Go go follow go follow this dude on Instagram <laughs> and just see the grind and see the consistency, man. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that translates across life. I yeah, think it does. Staying consistent with things, staying motivated, dedicated to something yeah. is really where you get a lot of results. And I and I love seeing that into you. What got you into fitness, man? Was it was it in the military getting started going? Were you in it before that? What, or or was it something way after the fact that brought um, you around this way? Well, with with fitness, it was like, you know, when I got home from Iraq, we talked about that a lot, but I was depressed, PTSD. I wasn't myself. And um, I remember going to like uh, the VA hospital and then one of the nurses was like, hey, you're never going to be the person you was before you went to Iraq. When she told me that, it basically changed. I was like, yo, so I can basically be whoever... I need to make this person be now. I was depressed, thrown off. Yeah, and I have, that's why when people say, just because you got money means you're going to be happy, it does not. You know, it does not. That's Money does nothing for you but help you pay bills. You don't get more time on this earth because you got money. It means nothing at the end of the day. So I was like, how do I change my outlook? I wasn't happy with me. I seen me go from like a skinny... Um, not skinny, but like kind of nice looking physique, slim, slim, nice to being depressed, thrown off face, getting all fat before my beard and stuff. And I was like, man, I need to change this. Let's go back to the workouts. There's like, oh, you know, working out helps with stress because in the military, all they do is they try to pump you full of pills. Like, mm-hmm. here, take this pill to sleep. Take this pill to do this. And I never took any pills. They give them to me. I'd be like, ah, put them in my cabinet. I'm going to do something else. So basketball helped a lot. I started, not started, but ever since we were young, we used to do basketball Friday nights when we were out of high school just to get the guys together. Because I, I don't see my brothers like that unless we're hooping. So <clears throat> let's get everybody together to hoop. That running, that condition, when you all tired on Friday night, like, I'm out of shape. 
<laughs> I can't keep being out of shape, getting drugged through the mud by my dudes that are terrible just because they're a little bit more fit than me. So then I was like, let's start working out. And then it was slowly two days, three days. And then I went to Brandon and Olivia, who's uh, Athletic Fitness. Um, Authentic, Authentic Fitness? Auth Authentic yeah, Fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see you go through that. So I went to Brandon. I seen him at my gym one time, and I was like, dang, I know this dude. Okay, let me go to Brandon and them. Brandon started training me in a way of enlightenment to not only just train the body, but to train the mind. So he got something out of me that was already there that I needed. I, I couldn't do it by myself. I needed a spark. So I was like, you know what? Let me go to Brandon and them. They were training at their house at the time. And he was like, yo, Jermaine, I'll train you. It's like 300 a month. I was like, if I refer people, it's a funny story. I'll refer people. How much do I got to pay? Well, it depends on how many people refer. So I brought him mad clients. So I really never paid It's anything. crazy that your mind is always yeah, working like that I'm way, all, man. always thinking you, that you way. You got so, the entrepreneur bug yeah, for so sure, man. I, I did that and went training. And he helped me, one, regain who I was. And we trained for like maybe him and Marcus trained me for maybe three months. And I mean three months, two days a week. So you break that down maybe 12 to 15 sessions. I was going through a lot, depressed, everything. He's like, man, you need to rest. Hey, take this. Right, let's rest. Let's read this book. They would send me Bible verses, send me different scriptures. And I started going to church around that time because of other things that happened. I started seeing myself change. I started becoming me again. That's when the beard started growing. I was like, dang. My wife at the time was my, just my girlfriend. She was helping me uh, get through these things. She's like, go work out. Go work out. So I was like, Dad, I like working out. I like the struggle and the pain of working out because I could see the results. So then I was like, you know what? After I was done with Brandon, uh, he started training Braxton Miller like right when I got done, right? So then his business blew up, right? So I got all these clients, helped them out. He had a whole client list of people working out. I'm like, Dad. But again, I've never been the person to ride no one's coattail. That's just not who I am. I stand on my own two feet. So I was like, Brandon doing real good. I'm going to start training myself military style. So that's the 5 a.m. workouts. That's the burnouts. That's the everything. And then like now people are like, how long you been working out? I always feel like it's only been a couple of months, but it's been years. It's been a journey. And it's like, this is a lifestyle change for me. Once I change my mind, I change my body. So then it's like, man, I want to work out. I want to look a certain way. I don't care about abs and all that. I just want to be healthy to buy more time with my family. I want to be around for my family. So it's like now I'm a little bit more into it where I'm working out now for a look. So I want bigger shoulders, bigger arms, superhero look. You know what I mean? So my boys, my babies can say, oh, my dad's this or whatever. So it's like I'm doing it per se for my mental health, but also just to help inspire other people. Like there's a lot of people that come and work out with me too now. Like it's all on IG. Yo, where you at? I'm like, yo, I'm at, I'm at uh, YMCA on Sundays. People come through. I know them strictly from IG. Ladies come through. Oh, I saw you at the gym. Let's hit a workout. Cool. Tell my wife, come through. My my brothers is working out with me now. One of my good friends, my brother, little brother, Kira, he just got home from the Navy. And he, the way his mind was, I didn't have someone there that knew what I went through. So I'm here for him. Let's hit this gym. Go to the gym at 5 in the morning. Get your mind right. Because if this goes, the body goes after it. So it's like, Let's get our minds right. That's why I call it the 5 a.m. crew because that's it takes a special person to wake up at 5 in the morning and actually work out. Military people do it all the time because they're doing it. It's a purpose of why they do that. Why don't they work out at 8 at night? There's a purpose to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. You have so much time on your hands after that. You already got, for some people, the worst part of the day over with. Mm -hmm. So people are telling me, like, waking up at 5, I hated it for the first week, but now I love it. I'm like, you don't even got to do it every day. Do it three days a week. Just do it. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people don't know. And it was something I didn't know until I started working out. It's surprising that working out actually boosts your energy. So you think you're going to go do it and then be drained and this and that. And don't get me wrong. If you go in there some days and kill. you really kill it or go crazy on legs or things yeah. like that, 
yeah, you're going to be a little yeah. worn down. But for the most part, working out boosts your energy. Yeah, it, it boosts does. your mood. It yeah. boosts a lot of things your for mind. you. Yeah, that Mental. makes you, yeah, that really puts you on the right path to to feeling better, to thinking about things more positively, clearly. Yep. It's like, Focus. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy to me how one of the big things I noticed too is like, you when you get on a consistent schedule and working out consistent, yeah. your mind, you push off the small stuff a lot easier, man. Correct. It's like stuff that hits you that's that really would have maybe yeah. triggered you a little bit or got at you and made you get in your feelings about some stuff. A lot of times if you got that workout, yep. you got a little I bit agree. of that frustration out yep. in a workout or just like, cleared your mind enough for that little time am I to breathe. Tripping about that? Nah. Yeah. And I think it's a combination of like what is all the things that are happening in your body and mind, the the good hormones and yep. things that it produces in you. I think it's the deep breathing. Yep. When you're either yep. running or working out or something, getting more oxygen just in. Just breathing, thinking and stress saying, all that, let man. me get all the stress off of me right now. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that'll get on and talk about the medical like facts behind all yeah, that and what it really lot. does for you so it helped me it yeah man my it's, life, it's man. it changed my life too yeah, it really it did it life, changed my man. life in a big way and i've i think i said it on here but i i definitely mean it and I, i've told people too as long as i'm capable i wholeheartedly plan on working out the rest of my life swear swear on everything and as long as i'm able yep because i'm of, able because of what it does for me and then to talk about like you talk about it's an added bonus. People think that we do it just to look a certain way. Yeah. That's like an added bonus yeah. once you really get into it. Yeah, once agree. you really get into it and see what it does for you, like mentally, physically, mentally, all that, like, and with your health. Mind, body, and soul. I say it all the time. I think it's a big part of what brought me out of being sick and stuff, man, yeah. is that it really, I, I, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try to get started back. I'm going to try. And it was like from that moment forward, it's like things started improving for me and my mind started changing. It was just like, and even just to get a workout in after not doing it for so long. And I think that would be the same way for somebody that may just want to start. Yeah. Getting that first one in. I think it's just the same start. way. I think just it's the start. same thing. Like you said, just start, man. Just because start. It, it gets you on that path. And, and it might just open your mind up to a, 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 a feeling you've never had before. Great. And even like a clarity you've yeah, never had Yeah, I agree. Before. You, you got you to gotta base everything on too. People look at other people's success and say, I can't get there by tomorrow, so I won't even start. You can't compare someone's chapter 20 to your chapter one when you just now are starting. Just start. By the time you get up to chapter 20, you're going to understand why you started. Like, man, just start. I've just heard, run the race. Yeah. It's funny that you say run the race because that's exactly what I was going to say next. I seen you. Did you do the Spartan race or you did? Yeah, you I did. did I did, I did a war, uh, Warrior Dash, the Spartan race. I did like the funny part is like those tough mutter. Yeah, type like, like I did the Spartan race, which is considered the hardest one. The day after we buried my aunt, mm -hmm. my boys was supposed to go. My brothers, oh, we gonna go, we gonna go. They didn't go. So my wife was my girlfriend at the time. My sons and my daughter went, and I was like, "This is supposed to be five point. I'm not a runner. I only run in basketball. We just buried my aunt." But how I'm wired, I said, I'm doing this. I could have stayed in bed that next morning and said, just bury my eye. I ain't going to do it. I, I need time. We went up there. And I'm talking about that was hard. Hard labor, hard work, hard everything mentally and physically. You think it's supposed to be 3.5 miles, and they're like, you get to that marker, they're like, Spartan Warriors don't run 3.5 miles. We run six miles. So it's not even, th they. you signed up for 3.5, but it's like, it's six miles. So oh. you're physically drained at 3.5 because you only train for four miles. And you talk to yourself into being You talk there. to your mind four miles. So you're like, I got two more miles of hell. I pushed through it. My kids seen it. And I was like, bruh, when they seen it, my sons, my daughter, my wife, I was like, I'm unstoppable. We just buried my aunt. And it was like, the way we buried her was like, not even like family, not even really there like that because of how my family is. So it was like, I had a chip on my shoulder. Like, I have to do this. Then when we did the mutter, my brothers came that time. They saw what happened the first time and said, this dude did it. I'm going. They might not ever, one of, one of my brothers not nowhere near in physical shape. He still wanted to do it because we I did it last time alone. I ain't leaving you alone. Cool. We did it. We went through it. It was amazing. My sister came down here. She was in Iraq with me, a, a girl I met in Iraq. 
Japanese and uh, black, became my sister. She flew down here to kick it. I'm like, you're doing the, you're doing the mother rip me tomorrow. What? I don't got nothing to wear. I got shoes, clothes, everything. You're doing it. But she's a soldier. She's an LT in the military right now. She ran faster than us half the time. She's light, no weight on her. She's doing all this stuff. Come on, Jake. I'm like, dang, like we did it again. Cause I like getting those little awards, and I want to do one with my my two oldest sons soon, so they can they can feel that pride of getting something done. I love that feeling. I love that camaraderie. I love it. Like we grinded it out. It, it was hard. There was hills that was like so steep. I was like, how am I going to get up it? We made a way. So just doing those, it prepares you for the next year. It's like, I'm ready. Like we are talking about now, what's the next one we're doing? And it's the, um, the Savage Race. So it's like, and that's in Ohio. So I'm like, we're going to get a group of people together. I'm going to produce some shirts. Hit me up, man, because I need to do one. Yeah. Cause, seriously, because I need I'll to do, do one. And I'll, and and that's kind of what I've seen. It's funny that you say all that because that's kind of what I've seen. And I'm like, there's a reason these are like almost addictive to people or like uh, – it's, it's something that it kind of it caught fire like that because I think it is that. I think it's one of those things that's similar to the business, similar to waking up at 5 in the morning, similar to a lot of things where it's, it's like push. if you push yourself and do it, it opens your mind and your eyes to like, man, what am I capable of? And what, what, capable what else of? could I could what else could I also be doing or also be pushing myself to really right, make agree, happen? Agree. So I want to do it for that, man. Yeah, I want to yeah. do it just it, to it like... Ch it changes your concept of thinking because you, you didn't... Some of the stuff that's on those courses, there's no way you could have trained for it. So it's just sitting there and you're like, I never trained for this. And they'd be like this, are you going to just walk around? Because if you walk around, that, that means you don't get that badge. You didn't do everything. And it's like, I can either bitch up and say, I, I can't do it. But that's that's in life. You're going to go through things that happen that you have no control of. So it's like, and that you couldn't prepare let me for attack it. it. Couldn't prepare for it. Like let me attack. Said. Let me attack it. Let me try it. Because if you try, they'll let you pass. You don't even try. It's like a mental thing in life. Like, where do you expect to go? Just go to the end. You're done. It's a wrap. And that's what, what it is for me. It's like, let me do things i never done before. Pulling your teammate up is one of the, the best films in the world. When you can get up that wall, but when you know your teammate can't, but you reach down and help them pull themselves up, it's an amazing feeling, man. Just helping each other. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it. you say a lot of the same things, and I don't know if you follow him at all, that I hear in Gary V. Yeah. Yeah. With the, yeah. That's that he yeah, off the with, chain. With that just start and that and, and talking about how that feels and, and, and all that that goes into something, getting through something like that, man, or – or or making something happen that you didn't think that you could right. and all that. I mean it's just do it. It is it's it's it. a huge part of people's uh success that I see yeah. for sure. Just do it. Uh just I seen recently you did the thing with the uh Fitbot app or whatever. Yeah. Was that, yep. What was that about? Or like uh that's just something that I was for my own interest, <laughs> yeah. man. I uh, just wondered what I, I found I didn't out about the it. app, right? So I was like with my influence, I was like, I can get mad people to sign up for this app. They need to cut me a check. Here we go again. Right, right. right. <laughs> I keep, I, this, this is, is my a, this mind. This is a common just, theme just, in you, know? man. So I, 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 I had my wife write them as, she's like, I have a client that uses your app. He lives by it. He's a military. He's a Purple Heart veteran. They wrote her back immediately and said, let's get the paperwork started. This is an app. I don't know who owns it. But it just ranked top 10 apps in 2018. And I'm part of the success that they had by just posting, I used to fit by app today. Here go my code. Here go this. Here go that. But then I told them, I was like, selling it to people is not really my thing. Just like Avocare. I'm a part of Avocare, but I don't really like to sell stuff to people. It's like selling people a dream and they could buy the product and never use it the right way or just never use it at all. I'd rather sell you the lifestyle. The lifestyle for me is getting up early in the morning because you see me get up in the early morning. That's why I say you, people should follow you. you. You see people, you see me in business meetings, you see me buying apps, you see me creating my own lanes, you see me spending time with my family, taking my wife out of the country, you see it. And I, 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 I really, really believe that you just got to ch change your lifestyle. Like, stop looking at other people's plate. And worry about what's on your plate. Change your lifestyle. Like any, we have access to everybody. I remember um, Russell Simmons told me. He said, 
if you need to reach out to someone that you want to talk to, they got an email address or they got an address just like you were regular people. Reach out. Just do it. I, I remember the, the seminar, uh, Russell Simmons came to Ohio State, uh, short set way. He was like, if you had an email question, you were allowed to ask him a question. So everyone in Ohio State had their email questions. They're raising their hand. They're raising their hand. I just was told, Russell Simmons going to be here. I know that's your guy. Go to this thing. I'm like, I'm telling my business partner, I didn't, we didn't know the email questions. How do I talk to Russell? Man, something took over me. I stood up in front of everybody and said, yo, Russell, hey, Russell, to Russell Simmons. He's like, who the fuck is that? That's what exactly what he said. I was like, whoa. But then he talked to me, me and him only, one-on-one -on -one like this, while everyone else watched and said, who's this kid that doesn't even go to Ohio State? Who's this kid? Asking, I was like, yo, Russell, how do I do this? How do I do that? He was like, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, well, people will find you. Next, I was on BET MTV. I didn't go reaching and looking. They came and found me. I was like, I'm going to go to your office and knock on your door. He's like, no, the fuck you not. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, they will come find you. Mm. And I was like, greatest advice probably I ever got from him was just go do it. And he came out with a book called Do You. I read the book. It was just go do it. Stop procrastinating. Stop waiting. Stop telling your friends that don't really, they don't go do it themselves. So you're going to tell the people that don't go do it themselves that you're trying to do something. All they're going to do is shoot you down. Go in this corner. I'm doing this. I'm doing it. They're going to get on board. And then you, you'll realize that you changed a lot of people's lives that are in your inner circle that they might have not been doing jack crap. But you started doing it. They look, like you said, Man, if he doing, I know I can do it. Yeah, I'm t I watch you, man. I watch you. I pick pieces from what you're doing, man. So I, I know people can. I, I see a lot of different things. Yeah. I seen also do you, uh do you have a rental property or did you Yeah, my first so my first house, um, it's kind of funny. I I was like, yo, I'm I'm about to cause my family grew. You know, my wife, when she came, she has two beautiful kids that are now my kids, right? They were older. I only had me and Lance for 13 years. So I had to ask him, yo, do you want brothers and sisters? Yes, I do, dad. Cool. Uh, so you cool with being a, a stepbrother? Whatever. Cool. So I bought a bigger house to supply my new family. I Then I had Jordan. All right? So I still in my little house. So I'm like, then my son Max just came out of nowhere. I'm like, what? Hey, God, listen, I ain't ready. <laughs> I, I had one son for 13 years. You just gave me two out the blue, plus the ones I was gifted. I got five kids out of nowhere. It's like, we need a bigger house. What am I going to do with this house? My wife, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. I'm like, I don't want to, we, we don't want to deal with it. I was like, I'm not really about selling though. I'm about owning. So I was like, let me fix the house up. Let me go buy appliances. Let me put, you know, the um, stainless steel in here. I got a renter when I was still fixing it up. The guy that came and did the landscape, end up becoming the renter. He was like, what are you doing with this house? I was like, I think I'm going to rent it out. I want it. I was like, yeah, whatever, man. I kept doing the floor, whatever. He came with his wife. They put a deposit down before I even moved out. It was God saying, it's, I, I've i been put in great situations. I never, They've never been bad. They call me two days before the first and always pay on time. And people's like, that's a blessing. It doesn't happen that way, I'm telling you. But because it happened that way, I was like, I need another rental property and another one. So now I'm reading um, Financial Freedom, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, right? Um, he was he said in his book he got his first property. It was kind of like a bad investment. But he said by the time the real estate market boomed, he had seven. My goal is seven people in my household is to have seven properties. I read that in that book, and it changed me. I said... He has seven properties. My goal was to be in to have seven properties. I was supposed to read this book at this time. Shout out to Stephanie gave that to me for a birthday gift. And it was like a bomb went off. I need more properties. I need more real estate. I need more passive. I need more passive income so I can fund my lifestyle. Because he says in the book, if you got 20 grand saved up and your bills are five grand, you only can really live for four months. Mm. If you are not working, but someone in your house is working, you're not, you're not financially free because that person still has to go to work to supply 
the house or whatever you guys got going on to be free. No one in the house should have to work for anyone. That's my goal now. So my kids don't have to want to be entrepreneurs per se, but I want to have a property in their name. So if I leave this earth, you ha I can give them a property. You're, you now have passive income. Even if you don't want to do nothing with it, you just let it build and do what you want to do. My daughter can still go to be, you know, whatever. I'm like, you want to buy a double? You live in one side, you round the other side, it covers the other side. I'm always trying to teach people like real estate is the bomb. It doesn't, you don't have to have money. You just have to have a vision. You just got to do it. So like my first property was my first learning experience. And these people have been in there for now. They're going on March to be the third year. I never had problems with them. And I'm a good, I'm a good landlord too, because they pay me on time because if they call me with a problem, it's handled within 48 hours. There you go then. You know what I mean? I, I learned yeah. really fast, like, hey, you want to rent out a house? Don't put someone in a house that you wouldn't live in. Put them in a house that my house was my first house. I knew what was wrong with it. Nothing, because I lived there. So my next property I'm going to get, I'm going to make sure it's done right. The furnace, everything is good. So when you go in there, just start paying me my rent. We're going to build that relationship. You're going to understand that. I'm not a realtor. I'm just a man with a mission. My mission is to have seven properties. I want to be retired by the time I'm 41 years old. Like retired, meaning enough income coming in from other avenues that I done brung in where I don't have to work. My wife doesn't have to ever go to a nail shop ever again. She wants to own one. Let's buy it. My daughter and them, they're in school. They don't got anything to worry about. <laughs> my Tesla, I don't even pay for that. It's It's... The, the moves I done made throughout the years that no one knows about, the struggle, the pains, the, the PTSD, the everything, where I was still figuring it out, but I knew you got to have seven incomes coming in. You can't just live off of one income. One person gets sick, it's a wrap. And insurance companies don't really want to pay. They want to get your money, but if something comes up that's not on that list, They'd be happy not to cut your family that check. For sure. Oh, yeah. They'll find that detail in there for sure. That gray area. Mm -hmm. So, like, I done seen enough people struggle with that to know I don't want to go out like that. My grandfather, my grandma left. He never worked a day in his life after that because they put the groundwork in now. So, it's like knowing that I want to provide for my family an endless opportunity. I don't care about having 50 million bucks. I don't, I don't care about that. I care about freedom. Freedom is no price. So it's like, if we're we're good enough with 500 grand and I can do whatever I want, I'm good with that because I'll make 500 grand look like 5 million. I don't need a big $5 million mansion that's going to cost me more in taxes. Like, it's just about reading and knowing the knowledge. Like, reading even, I just looked at a couple pages of this. I screenshotted some of them or I put them on my Insta snap, just things I need to remember because it's like, same things he's talking about is the same things I'm doing. People say, you should write a book, you should write a book, you should tell this, you should tell this, you should tell this. And I, I feel like I'm not even where I need to be at yet to tell anyone any information. You know, you know what I'll tell you about that, though? Just do it. Right. Ten, right. It, right. The only reason I say that, and I don't, and like I said, we're, this is, again, this is me who hasn't done a lot of the things you guys have done in this net, but it just, all the things that you have mentioned and that you have already said. It's a book. It's more than a book. Yeah. It's a couple books. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Look at me in my face, yeah. man. I'm being real with you. It's more than a couple yeah. books because I've seen it in, in this book for, for the people that are just listening. This, he's talking about Josh Waters' book, yep. Streams, yep. the uh, guy that was my first guest on the podcast. But so. the, the things that you've put out and that you've told me just sitting here now and us just talking tonight are gems, man. And they're yeah. things that people could take little pieces from and you throwing in a story with how this worked out this yep. way and the, and the avenues this went, it's, it's, it's it amazing, needs to be there, right, man. man. And it's that passive income, man. Yeah. It's that passive income that people need and that really provides freedom is a lot of Great. the things that you're mentioned. That's what it will lead to. Yeah. And I think that's why if you, uh, that, that book, yeah, that's a passive income, man. Yep, I know. Get it, get it working, man. Get that's it working. That's easy too, if you to need, do. If you if you need to talk to him or talk to, I mean, maybe you know some people, or I I know another guy that just put out one as well. Yeah, I'll probably bring him on also. If you need to know anything with how, let me know, man, yeah. because I really think you should go ahead with it. I yeah, really yeah, do. yeah, I yeah. do. I've been, I've been told that so many times. Like, you need to go ahead and put a little book together. Stop playing, just do it. I'm like, but for me. It's about having lanes too, right? 
So this ain't this not my lane yet. I will have a book. You think so? Right, right, right. But it's like I want to do so much more. So when I give this, when I give my first book, I want it to be like back to back, nonstop knowledge, straight knowledge. I feel like I have a lot more to learn. When I have seven properties, when I'm when I'm my daughter graduates college, it's like, yo, you got layers. Like you said, there is multiple books. I'm probably sure I can I could probably lay down some some stuff. But for me, it's like, okay, let's get these first things out the way first, these first goals, and then do that. You know what I mean? Listen, listen to this <laughs> podcast, or at least I'll try to send you the portion yeah, please. where uh, he's talking about writing the book. Yeah. Because the thing is, he said the short kind of time he like he he, he, he wrote it really he held, fast. He held back on it. He said he held back on the same type of thing like you're saying. He held back on it, held back up, And then eventually just kind of knocked it out. Because once he started going, he was like, man, I really have a lot to say. Or I really know angles of things and no yep. business and this and that. And I'm telling you, the only reason I say what I'm saying, even after you... You're giving me good reasons and stuff. But the one thing that I see in it, what you're saying, yeah. the difference is there are people that are trying to start that only have that little bit yeah. that you think you have, like yeah. you're sitting here telling me you have a little bit, you have way more knowledge than you think <laughs> right, because there's right. so many people that don't even have 10% of what you just said tonight. Yeah. 25%. Yeah. So if they get to read your book and that bumps them up another 20%, you don't have to be giving them. This is life. Yeah. This is, these are the keys yeah, to life. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be God. You don't have yeah. to be yeah. somebody that knows all. Yeah. You know more than a lot of people. You've experienced more than a lot of people. I just you, did it. Yeah. I just did it, right? You're right, too. You're right about the book. You do, right, it, you're right. do it, man. Do it, man. Because wanted me about it. Do it, man. Because I think, especially off of hearing what he said about it, it's, it's, it sounds like it's the same process. And you said people shouldn't overthink it. Yeah, you shouldn't. Don't overthink it. Yeah. Because you know what you can do if you're not happy with the first one? Yeah. Do another one. Do another one. Do it all. Use 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 what you didn't like about the first one to fix the issues and in, into the second one, or make the second one about something that maybe is more important to you. And you realize, oh, I kind of went deep into this lane when really I should have went here because this is what I'm really passionate about, yeah. or this is what I know. But think about even if you told your story of the military story, that's uh, a book. Yeah, I know. That's a movie actually. We was gonna write yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, come it. on. You know what I mean? So. so yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, man. It'll be a lot. I mean, I know you got. Saying. I know you got. That's you got to have big. the time. Yeah. You have family. You got to try yeah. to manage all yeah. that. But it's just. It's, it's manageable. just. It's just yeah. something to think about. Yeah, man. It's something to think about. For I, agree. Sure. I agree. I agree. But before we get out of here, too, it maybe with you mentioning uh, mentioning the the Tesla, and I've seen you kind of go through your progression of cars. Yeah. Over the past few years, do you are you a lease person? Or are you a a, a trade in um, person? Like own. Um, I want to really? own everything. That's yeah, dope, man. Everything because. I'm always interested to ask people not not just to like get in somebody's pockets yeah, or, or try to figure out what they're doing, but it's always like, you said you were cheap, so then it, so then it makes me wonder. So with you being cheap, what is the angle that you're going at this, or what? How do you do Use that? Other to, people's income, okay. OPM, other people's money, to fund your lifestyle. If I have rentals, the the overage helps pay for things mm. I don't got to take out of my check. Okay. So that's why I said in, in good credit, I used to not believe in credit at all. I used to be like, if you got the money, screw credit. Who cares? Until you want to buy something A that money value. can't yeah. buy, right? So they want to look at your history. So then I was like, let me build my credit up. Okay, let's pay off everything that might be negative on me, right? So once you do that, then you start looking at OPM, other people's money. Other people's money is comes from books, passive income. It comes from rental properties, the overage. It comes from sneaker freaks. It comes from anything that you can create that is not done by you clocking in. That's other people's money that are funding what you're, you're producing. So then I, t I take that money and I look at it differently mm. because because... If you can see your money, you don't have no money. And, and what I mean by that is if I, could, I look at my bank statement and I can see money, I'm like, okay, I don't, got, I don't, I don't have enough money. Because if I can count the digits, there ain't enough money. So you got to realize that paying on a car payment, anyone can have a car payment. I was looking at Lambos. I was looking at everything possible that just was 
outrageous to a normal mindset. I don't think average ever. I don't want an average life. I don't want an average wife. I don't want average kids. And what I mean by that is I want to settle for whatever is, is in front of me. Ham and cheese sandwich when I could really try to cook myself steak. Why would I, why would I want ham and cheese when I grew up on that? I don't want that. I want steak. The steak might be terrible. It might be nasty. The first time, like you said, the book, I could always recook it. So using other people's money, and not in a bad way, it's just I have a rental property. That rental property pays me X, Y, and Z overage. Oh, having a car in your name, you could have a company and write that you need a new car every two years. If you know what you're doing, you could write that off. There's different things that we're not really meant to know being in a game because when you work for somebody a nine to five is it's, it's great if you get i get paid pretty decent for my nine to five but the government is my business partner because they tax the hell out of me so the rich get richer not because they're greedy because they know that if i create x y and z and put johnny davis and carlton in those job positions i'm creating more job opportunities i get more tax breaks so I'm using other people's money, other people's time to fund my lifestyle. That's exactly what it is. So like my Jeep, I own it. My son doesn't know this yet, but I bought him a Jeep. His birthday is January 8th. He obviously probably won't see this. He don't do social media like that. But I wanted him to own his own car. So what I did was, hey, save the money in the bank account like I told you. I took the money out of his bank account, applied it. I paid forty-four hundred for his Jeep. He wanted this Jeep like mine, but two-seater, two-door, hardtop, nineteen two thousand a year. He was born. I found it. Forty-four hundred is worth twelve grand. All right. So basically, he got skin in the game. If he says, "Dad, I want to take this to Carmax," they might give him eight grand for it. We pay forty-four hundred. He gets the forty-four hundred back plus the overage. He could put it right in his bank account and, and walk out and say. I don't want a car. I'm going to use Uber. But the point, I'm putting in position to win. So I was like, you know what? You save your money. I took the 1300 out to add it with the, the rest of the money. So we paid 4400 for it. He don't even check his bank account. He doesn't even know the money's gone. What I'm going to do on his birthday is give him a check for the 1300 so he never paid for his car. Mm. I paid for it. I wrote it down when he was four. Buy this man's car, this boy's car, before his 18th birthday. I did that. My bucket list is... It's, it's amazing. Take him to Puerto Rico, him and his brother. I did that. It's about using the little business things that I've learned. And I don't know everything. My dad would save money, put money in the bank, put money underneath your mattress, save it for rainy days. From there, I took it as, dang, well, how's this person getting here? Like you said, I, that person did it. Why can't I do it? You know, some people have different leverage when they're born into this world, some people have better advantages, but we all can pick up books and read. We all can read, watch podcasts, blogs, everything you need to know to learn how to actually build wealth. Build wealth is creating other opportunities that are not partner you with the government. Government wants 50% of our bread. Every time I... Oh, they want as much of it as they yeah, can Yeah, and mean, if you don't sure. file, yeah. and they're, they're coming for you. Yeah, and they're, and, they're, and like you said, there's a lot of ways that it's always good to ask and, and try to learn and, and pick up a book or get online or watch a podcast or uh, a video or something and try to find out those ways that you could be cutting yourself a little break with your tax money, man. Like even going to school, right? Going to college is amazing, but it's teaching you to be a worker. Mm -hmm. and, and like, let's just be real. If you go to college, that's amazing. That's great. But like I said, with the like graphic design thing, learn a second hustle with that. Build websites on the side so you have a side business. You save yourself so much more. I was going to college and I got frustrated because the teachers wasn't really telling me how to make more money. They was telling me how to be a better worker. And so I went to this marketing class and the teacher started looking me up on LinkedIn. She's like, you got... 4,000 people on LinkedIn. She started looking more. She found out about J-Work. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just trying to build a business. She's like, you already have one, fool. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Do it. I don't want to see you. Like, So now I go to when I go to school, it's just to learn more, to fund more ways to make more income. 
I make more passive, like I want more money and like I want to pay off all my debt. I want to have zero bills, but a house payment. Every other bill doesn't really matter to me because I'm using other sources to fund those bills, cable bills, everything of that nature. Like you could write off cable bills if you have no HBO, no nothing. You could write off every trip that you go on long as it's not a cruise. It Without even a real estate license, wherever you go, you go look at one property, you can write that off. You don't got to mm -hmm. have a real estate license, but if you go on a cruise, that's considered a trip. If I go to Bar if I go to Barbados in July and look at a property, I went and looked at a property. I want to buy it. Who's going to tell me I can't? I can write off that trip. There's the knowledge of not knowing that stuff. We don't know. We going on trips. We partying. And there's rich guys going on trips doing the same party you're doing, eating better than you, driving a Lambo. I, that's why I learned about the Lambo. Like my friend who who's well off, he's like, why buy a Lambo to have it parked in Columbus when I could just go out of town and rent one for a couple days? Same thing. He drives a Honda. They like you still don't get it yet. I, I'm still kind of thrown off because I feel like I work so hard and I am very cheap. I want to have something nice every blue moon. Yeah, yeah. And, and sneakers only go so far. It's like, yeah, I buy all the sneakers, but what do I do with them? I don't go out. I don't do it. They just sit in boxes and collect all this room. My wife is like, why do you have, get rid of all these shoes and I can't stop buying them. So I feel like I'm a slave to it. So even with the car, I was going through like, do I want a BMW i8? Do I want a Tesla? Do I want a new Jag? I feel like I need something. My dad's like, you don't need a new car. You have a Jeep. You don't need it. But I had the Benz and the Benz is just sitting there because I gave it to my daughter. She's in college. She's not really driving. And I'm like, am I really paying for a Benz? Even though I'm using other sources of money, I'm still paying money yeah, for right, it. Right. So it's a mindset. Once you change how you view money, money's going to come in and out of your life. And I know that I had a lot of money. I lost it. Gained it back, lost it again by being young, dumb, not knowing what I was doing, losing on business, investing too much when other people wouldn't invest with me. I, I learned those things. It's like, okay, I'm not going to do that no more. I'm going to be really smart. I'm not going to invest in stock because if the company crashes, I lose all my money. Putting your money in the stock market is cool, but we don't, if you got inside trader, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. So, if a company is about to crash, you don't know, and you got 10 grand in, you're dancing, you wake up the next day. This happened to me last year. The weed stock was booming. I bought some weed stock on a Monday. It was booming. I'm 5K in. We dancing. Me and my boy Aaron. It's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Friday, Trump, somebody said something about the weed on Friday. Monday, because the stock doesn't trade Saturday and Sunday. Mm hmm Monday morning, I woke up. I couldn't get out fast enough. I was losing all of my money. Now, did I panic? Yes. But did I say I took a five grand hit? Yes, I, I did. But I'm able to do that because I have money. I have it coming in five sources of income. They said when you get seven, you can reach millionaire status. It's not about the money. It's about the sources of money to get to that level of freedom. I just want to be free. Jay-Z's verse, what free, meant something different to me. I hear everybody posting. I see the memes. I see all this. But when I heard it, I heard something differently. Freedom. I want freedom. Uh, exhibit interview, he said, when are you going to stop tap dancing? Meaning, when are you going to start working for people? When you got, God gave us these gifts and we don't even utilize them. Your gift might be talking to people. That's why you said on the one podcast, you said, I think this is my passion. I was like, I'm down to do this interview because anyone that's willing to work for their passion, you might have thought it was modeling at one time. You said you got sick. That God has a way of showing us different things. People need to hear these things. And sometimes it does need to come from multimillionaires, but then sometimes it need to be from people that look just like us. Like, dang, they really doing it. Like I was like, I'm always, this mind be working. I go to a haunted house. I'm like, how much did they pay for the building? I want to rent a building and start yeah. my own haunted yeah. house for yeah. a month and a half. They're like, we made 70 grand in, in 45 days. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, the things you're saying is exactly why I wanted to do this is because of what you said to let people see this and hear these conversations and see these people and really learn that type of stuff. It's funny. You say something about the haunted house. I had a guy come here a while, a while back and buy some, uh, uh, like event tents from me. Yeah. And, uh, 
he said that one year he threw a couple of them up and did a haunted house through these tents. So he didn't even have to have the building or the property. Don't tell me that. And yeah, yeah. Don't and he said he made, and he said he made a killing. I believe it. A killing. And he put it up through the tents on just a random property that was like abandoned or something. That's what I mean, man. Like things like that, that knowledge, like even like throw, we went to throwing parties, like it's cool to throw a party, right? But I want to throw an event. We throw a Halloween event every year that's pretty successful, and I do it once a year. I'd rather do events that's going to bring in more people so people go away saying, "I en- Stinker Freaks is an event. They enjoy it. That's why they want it back. It makes me feel like doing it. If it's the same thing and I'm getting the same comments, I don't want to do it. It's like mm-hmm. I'm not inspired by that. I need to be inspired when I put out product. I need to be inspired when I work out. Like Sometimes I watch these workout videos, these guys. Like I'm, put- I'm about to do one now. Where my team gets together and we have somebody shoot us. Because I have a lot to say that's going to get someone up at 5 in the morning. People are like, I hate you. I can't. I can't. And then when they get up, they're like, man, I think I'm I'm off work by 4. I don't know what to do with myself. I got the whole 6, night. 7 hours. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling. Watching movies, watching videos, spending time with my mom and dad. I'm like, working out at 5 in the morning changes something in you. It's, it's that freedom. You just, I mean, that's exactly what you've been saying here the whole time. It adds more freedom to your life. Yeah. That's what I noticed by starting doing it on my lunch break is that I was like, it it was so crazy to me to get home and be like, after I had been months and months coming home, be like, oh, I got to try to figure out when I'm going to squeeze a gym in the night, uh, still spend some time with my daughter. Maybe we got to run and go here. Maybe this and that. Yep. And once I started having it knocked out when I got home, it's knocked out already. It's It's amazing. I can sit, it's amazing, watch movies, man. take my daughter to the park. Yeah, it's amazing. Clean up the house, do it. I mean, whatever. <laughs> whatever it's you like, want to do. You, you got that time. Find, find avenues to give yourself yeah. more freedom. I think that's what I take. One of the Will be one of the biggest takeaways I get from this podcast with you, man, is that you're giving me even more ideas of places to draw freedom, bring yeah. more freedom into my life through money, through time. Through time. just being more efficient on things, yeah. Because I see it in you. You're, I mean, it looks like in your daily and in, in, in the the day of a day in the life of Jermaine that it's like it's efficient and it's yeah. and it's routine. And I don't know if maybe you picked that up in the military, probably, probably, yeah. But probably. that routine is is putting you on a super efficient step by step path that gets you to where you want to be. Yeah, my 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 guy Dale uh, Moncrief always says. Set yourself on fire. People will come to watch you burn. He always tells me that, right? So in my mind, we always go back to anime. People say, man, you're like Goku. And I'm like, what you mean by that? Because you fight for everything you want. You don't went through some of the hardest battles and you always come out on top. But they don't see all the struggle all the time. They just see the end result. They don't see the broken me. They see the what I got now, what's going on now. And I always tell people... I had to break, create a system. My guy Boo Townsend says, you know, separation, seven degrees of separ- separate yourself. So it, it looks different over here. I don't want to be like everyone else. I don't want to be that percentage of going to work every single day. I know I can do more. That's the worst feeling to me in the world, knowing I can do more and seeing it. But I'm so afraid that if this check doesn't come in, I don't, I can't pay my mortgage. This check doesn't come in. My kids can't go to, I don't know, Walt Disney World. I don't ever want that to be anyone's mindset around me because if I'm spending time talking to you and you bouncing your ideas and concepts off me, you have no choice but to grow around me. You have no choice because I'm going to make you see the best in you. I'm going to make you see the worst in you. I'm going to make you see your downfalls because that's what needs to happen. We don't have enough real people around us to say, yo, get your ass up and go to work. I don't mean go to work for someone. I mean, if that's your thing, going to work, great, do it, but utilize it where it benefits you. Don't just sit there and then 20 years later say, I wish I would have done it because you might not have the 20 years. God might say, man, I gave you 30 years. You didn't get it. I gave you, and they say this in church, year one through 25 is one chapter. Year 25 through... 50 is the second chapter. Most of us don't get the third chapters of our lives. So how do you want to be remembered? In my second chapter, 41 years old, I don't care if it's the day before I turn 42, I want to be retired 
from my job. I'm about to work my A off from here on out. And people that's around me is going to have to fill it. They're going to, you know, we don't see Jermaine. You don't see me now. You don't see, you see what I post because I want you to see it. But take away Facebook, take away Instagram. I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to be the hustling person that I think my dad created me to be. I'm going to be the person that's passionate that God wants me to be. And I want everyone around me to reach that level of success. I got people buying houses. Like I talk about other people's success around me. That's really big too. It's not about me. I don't think I'm doing anything. I know people think I am, but I don't. That's the thing that I think keeps me going. Like people be like feeling some type of way and I'll be like, I don't even think I reached any level. I think I'm still on ground zero. And I, that humbles me, one. My friends keep me really humble. My, my wife does. You know, we got this to do, this to do. My babies keep me humble. But more importantly, I want everyone around me to reach their full potential because I can't reach mine if you're not trying to reach yours. I, what am I even talking to you for? I want more out of life. And I think some people take that the wrong way. They take it as, oh, you trying to be cocky or you're trying, it's like, no, I really want you to reach your full potential. If I see you doing it, I can do it too. Just do it. If I have nothing else to say, just start, just do it. Just go for it. Grab it. Just run with it. Like you can't outwork me. That's just the bottom line. Man, you give me chills through multiple <laughs> sentences in that, in that rant, man. And I love that people are going to get to hear all that yeah. because it's, it's, it's like why I said that I love following you online and, and watching and, and that you are a person that does post a lot of your day-to-day -day routine on the yeah. stories and stuff like that because people seeing this and then getting to hear you and then go take a look and see that you're, you're yeah. walking the walk. You're not just on yep. here talking that. It's, I think it's going to be something that really grabs people. And I, I, I can't add to what you just yeah. said. I really can't because, I mean, I think you said so much and it's and it's stuff that I can't even speak to. Yeah. But it's 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 the same thing I hear from really successful people, really yeah. driven people, and people that are going big places, yeah. man. So I'm super glad you came on. Me is, too, man. Is there anything uh, you want to talk about or mention, even if it's something that's personal to you with your family and all that, or if it's just something like you want to plug uh, something with uh, either sneaker freaks or another business lane or anything like that? Well, what, what I could say just to end it is that when you said something about my videos. I get a lot of comments on the videos because people are like you're at every one of your son your son's games. Yeah, how do you do that and do a business? Get up at five in the morning, and how do you do it all? And I I, I say the same answer: it's all God, and I don't even know. I don't even know. I I think it's like I'm a maniac, but it works for me in my life. I want my kid to look over at his basketball game and say. Yeah, we're seven and one. My dad is there at all games. Lance, if I got to pick him up from work and take him to school every morning, I'll do it. My baby got to go to school on Friday, I'll do it. Uh, Max and them need baths when I'm off work. My wife, you don't got to do that, I'll do it. You need time away, I'll do it. Because you allow me to live my life. You allow me to be this crazy maniac person that's allowed to do anything, I, any idea I have, the household is just do it. Just do it. And you need that circle. You need that surrounding. You need those people around you. So I love this. I, I, I looked at the 270 guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I looked at him. I, I looked at, I, I did my research. My wife did her research. There's so many people that help make you. I didn't get this way on my own. My dad did. My wife did. My friends around me did. They help push me in their own way, even if it's from them stepping it back. That pushed me even more. I want to always be that person that you always look at and say that no matter what, that is going to work. This is this is why the so, the social media thing is also positive. Yeah. Because I've gotten to see this in you. Yeah. And it's right now at this moment. This is a time where I can't tell you how much since this made to bring you on yeah and and it makes me so glad that i did and it shows me that everything that i've been seeing in you over the years online is who you are and is what you're about and you're about the right things that are or the things that i believe in my heart yeah are the right things and that i think 
other people can get some motivation from and really possibly make a change in their Great. lives. That's why I say I'm, I'm full of sin. I always say that because I've done things that I got to answer for, right? I'm not perfect. I'm just trying to make the best of my abilities and give my family and friends the life that I feel like they deserve. I feel like everyone deserves freedom. We all do. Like, I wish we all can just quit and have money to pay for everything we need to do so we can actually... Imagine if the world, everyone could quit their job, still make the same income, but do your passion. How would the world change? That would be insane. That should be a movie. Yeah. That would well, be insane. Well, and there's a lot of talk about that coming with AI. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of talk about that coming where a lot of the jobs and a lot of things will be automated and we may get to a point where there's not much purpose for us to work day-to-day -day jobs that and, that, and that may come. And that's the... Like I said before, that's the optimistic side yeah. of where it could go as opposed to what people think in yeah. iRobot and this and that yeah. where like it can turn crazy yeah. for us. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. But I think, man, I think that's a perfect way to wrap all this up is that you're getting that everything being about that freedom aspect yep. and how much that can change people's lives and how small tweaks and different mindsets can really put you on that path. Agreed. 100%. I love it, man. And I, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this up yes. on that, man. Yes. Yes. Thanks for coming on. And uh, appreciate you guys. Go man. check him out online, man. Go yeah. follow him and get a glimpse at his story and just see how he lives, how he moves, and, and what's possible. Yep. Thanks, man. Right, I appreciate man. you. Appreciate it, man. Ooh.